Welcome in to game 43 of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our dear friends over at Zappos. It is the rematch between the Savannah Bananas and the Aussie Drop Bears. It was a thrilling first battle an evening ago or a morning ago. If you're watching from a land down under, the Bananas came away with a 3-1 win. The tying run was in scoring position. Go ahead run at the dish. Let's send it down to the weigh-ins as we are off and rumbling. Of the angriest kangaroo, training for tonight he fought a 10 foot tall reptile representing the aussie drop bears riley right flex it for me show me what you got here man and the weight is how's that in kilograms Weighing in at 73 kilograms, Riley Wright! And for his challenger, in the opposite corner, recently voted the most beautiful man in baseball. His six pack has a six pack. He is the undefeated Tinder champion of the world. The only time he's caught stealing is when he's caught stealing your girl. Representing your Savannah Bananas, Noah Br -br 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 Bridges! Looking good, my man. Step right up here for me. Show him what you got. Oh, the pack flex. He's ready for tonight. Are you ready for tonight? <laughs> Weighing in at a perfectly lean 190 pounds, Noah Bridges. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Vincent Chapman with the call. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, direct your attention down the first baseline. It's time to meet the cast of your 2023 Banana Ball World! Jesse Cole and company parading down the right field line as we are less than 20 minutes away from first pitch here in night two between the Bananas and the Aussie Drop Bears. Biko Scala alongside Josh Tolevsky. Of course, this whole thing was supposed to kick off on Thursday evening. We played three innings, had the first ever rain out in Banana Ball history, and now here in game 43 of the tour, the, the uh, 73rd Banana Ball game of all time, should have been 74. We get the rematch between these two squads, and it was a fantastic battle last night. I mean, it was an unbelievable game. From the jump, we saw the Drop Bears score two runs in the first inning, and then the Bananas counter and score or two runs of their own. Nobody scores a point in the first inning. As the game progresses, Jared Donaldson sets in and has a really good outing for the Bananas. The Bananas tack on three points in the game, but we saw a late rally from the Drop Bears. They put five runs up on the board in the eighth inning, scoring their first point of the night. And then again, when every run counts as a point in the ninth inning, the Drop Bears get two guys in scoring position with one out and DR Meadows with one of the plays of the season as he catches the ball in center field, fires the ball home, and Bill Arroy puts the tag on. It was an unbelievable play and a great win for the Bananas. Yeah, so now we will see if this series ends up tied a game apiece between the Nanners and the Drop Bears or if the Bananas can sweep this thing. And we've got a really exciting broadcast for you. We're going to be talking to Matt Cavill later on tonight, the owner of the Drop Bears. And we are going to have the one, the only, Funky Phil in the broadcast booth eating Tim Tams. And, uh, you know, we've been having a lot of silly, silly times here across the uh, game and a third or so between the Nanners and the Drop Bears. Funky Phil has been at the center of it, and you get to look at him celebrating the rain out with Jackson Olsen and Jeremy Atkinson down there, a little tarp slide action. Then he's pinch running last night in the flops, or as they call them in Australia, the thongs. And really good form there. And this is a guy who's literally still playing at the sea level of 
baseball in Australia, fourth highest level there is, and he is getting after it with Tanner Thomas. This is probably my favorite ring dude performance of all time. No, it is It is number one in the top guest ring dude performances of all time. You're gonna see Funky Phil doing some kicks here. You're actually gonna get the push-ups like you can see right here, shades of Ivan Trezak. <laughs> Funky Phil, man, there is nobody on the Aussie Drop Bears team who's having more fun than this man right now. You hypnotized our audience at the start of last night's broadcast. Funky Phil hypnotized me with this beautiful rendition of some ring dude activities here. And keeping up with Tanner Thomas, he's going to get to take the sign. Actually, you don't get to see him take the sign, but you get to see him in person. There is Funky Phil. We are not going to give him any caffeine tonight when we have our Tim Tams. Josh and I will have the coffee. Phil will have hot water. He said he, uh, if he has some coffee, things can go really off the wire. So we're going we're gonna to make sure nothing wild happens there. Now, for the Bananas, they turn to Kyle Lewigs, the ace of their squad. Cowboy Kyle Lewigs, that is. And boy, has he been great against challengers. He has really shown why he's the ace of this banana staff in challenger games. I mean, as we get into the numbers here, Kyle Lewigs with three starts on the season. He's got wins in all three of them for the Bananas. And how about this? 17 innings pitched, a 1.59 ERA. The Banana Ball Tour average ERA this season is 6 Point one seven. Kyle Lewigs has been utter dominant against these challenger opponents and an MPI of four minutes and 15 seconds. Great for Kyle Lewigs and striking out almost four batters to every batter that he allows a sprint to. And Kyle was talking to Josh and I before the ball game. There's a plan to get the trick pitching extraordinaire Matt Wolf into the ball game. They were thinking maybe around the sixth, even the fifth inning possibly. And Kyle said there's no way that Matt Wolf is going to get into this game at all. I'm going all nine tonight. The only chance that the pride of Joy Oklahoma is going to have to throw is maybe a celeb pitch if he comes in from second base. So uh, Mr. Lewix is going to try and stay hot against challengers, and he has his task. Uh, it's a tall task against these drop bears. They have a lot of powerful hitters. It starts at the top. Max Brennan, three for five yesterday, a home run away from the cycle. He was phenomenal. I mean, it was unbelievable stuff from Max Brennan. We saw a lot of hard hit balls off his bat. And by the way, you got to credit some of the other guys in this lineup. Paul Winland, Blake Cavill, they swing good bats as well. The Drop Bears top of the lineup is equally as dangerous as the Bananas, and I think we'll see them do some damage tonight. All right, we are all ready to rumble. It's going to be a beautiful broadcast tonight. Really happy to see the rematch between the Aussie Drop Bears and the Savannah Bananas. Now that we're all fired up, let's get the crowd here in Historic Racing Stadium ready to rumble as well. Jesse Cole is going to get the fans riled up and ready to rumble. Guys are gonna do Reese. Let's bring it. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, fist bumping. I like it. Oh yes, Reese. Keep it going. Keep it going. All right, we're doing a little swimming. I like that. Here we go. What else we got, Reese? Oh no, jumping jacks. Oh no. We are getting loose now, folks. Here we go. All right, Reese. What else we got? Here we go. Oh no, we're grittying. We're grittying. They're, they don't got it yet, Reese. They're trying it. All right. Here we go. Let's get it back to what they know. All right. Yes. Fans, let's hear it for seven-year-old Reese. Amazing job. Well done. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, and potassium enthusiasts from around the world, tonight, you and thousands of your friends are here live, and thousands more at home watching on YouTube. You've gathered here to witness something beyond your wildest dreams. From Montana to Savannah, from the Isle of Man to Tokyo, Japan, the Banana Maniacs come from across the globe to witness this, this is not baseball. This is the crucible where the fastest, hungriest, and most entertaining players are forged. This is a game of the fans, by the fans, and for the fans. But this is not your granddad's pastime. This is not just another night at the ballpark. 
This game is baseball by birth, fruit by name, and an absolute worldwide phenomenon by the grace of God. This is the time for all 4,000 plus fans here in Banana Land to get on your feet and give me your voices. Because this is the greatest show in sports. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Banana Ball. Now the starting lineup for your bananas in center field. Number five, DR, the Doc Meadows. Behind the plate, number three, Eric Jones. The extra hitter, number seven, Michael Vitamin D. At first base, number 19, Dan Opers. At DH, number 24, Dakota, D-Mac McFadden. At third base, he's our greatest showman, number eight, Jackson Olsen. At shortstop, our glove magician, number six, Ryan Cox. In right field, number 41, Vinny, the Italian stallion, Darubius. In left field, number nine, Noah B -b 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 Bridges. And at second base, number 18, Danny Hosley. On the mound for your Savannah Bananas, number 12, straight out of Richmond Hill, Georgia, Cowboy Kyle Louise. Your Bananas are managed by Tyler Gillum and Adam Viren. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Australian Colors tonight, please welcome Alfie Thompson. Here to perform the Australian National Anthem, please welcome the Bananas Pep Band. the Star Spangled Banner, performed tonight by Marin Shepherd. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and Still there, oh, 
of game 43 of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our dearest of pals over at Zappos. The Bananas at 20, 20, and two, looking to get back above 500 for the first time since March 11th, when we, they took down the former Major League Baseball players of the MLB PAA. The Drop Bears, of course, 0-1. After losing last night, three points to one. And there is Cowboy Kyle Lewigs, who will be on the bump for the Nanners tonight. We ran through it. He has been excellent against challengers. And the Bananas defense behind Jared Donaldson and company last night was on one. Nine trick plays. See how they can do tonight. From left to right in the outfield, Noah Bridges, D.R. Meadows, and Vinny Derubius in the infield, third to first, Jackson Olsen, Ryan Cox, Danny Hosley, and Dan Oberst. Eric Jones Jr. behind the dish, and there's Cowboy Kyle on the bump. And this honestly might be one of the most impressive defensive lineups we've seen from the Bananas all season. Noah Bridge is a guy you normally throw out in right field. He's in left for the third time this season. You've got a great arm in left, a great arm in right field in Vinny Derubius, and it's always great to see Dan the man back at first base. And how about Ryan Cox, the glove magician, gets four trick plays last night to bring it to a tour total of 69 on 6-9, and Jared Donaldson throws 69 pitches. It's a pretty nice statistic, I'll tell you what. You can't make it up. Lewig's on the bump, the tour leader in trick plays. Of course, Cox at short. The tour leader overall in trick plays. When I say Kyle on the bump, that's just for pitchers. DR in center leading all outfielders. He's, here's how the Aussie drop bears line up against the pride of Richmond Hill, Georgia. Max Brennan, the shortstop, the man out of Sydney, Australia, who mentioned went three for five last night, just a homer short of the cycle. Josh Lavender hitting second. Blake Cavill hitting third. Paul Winland Jr. cleaning it up. Riley Light, Cooper Morgan, Jaden Cavill, Luke Livian, and Rich Thompson round out the lineup. And this is what Kyle has done across a tour high 84 and a third innings pitch. Four minutes and 55 seconds per average in inning thrown. Here's Mr. Jesse Cole. It's time, Banana Nation. On three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. Leading off for the Drop Bears, Max Brennan. Kyle coming off a good start against the Party Animals. Scattered nine hits across four and a third innings. Gave up a couple runs, but gave the guys a chance. Bananas won two points and only lost one in the time he was out there. Jackson Olsen, 360 across the diamond. One pitch, one out for Cowboy Kyle and company. And that's a stellar play to start the ball game from Jackson Olsen. He continues to get more and more comfortable out there at third base for the Bananas. Now Max Brennan, three for six in this mini series. Four for eight with an extra double if you include what he did in the three innings on Thursday evening. Here's Josh Lavender, the third baseman. One for five last night. With a ribeye, a couple runs scored. Twenty twenty one and twenty two World Tour Party Animal. Breakfast Bowl Banana in twenty twenty one. Also played against the Kansas City Monarchs for the Nanners in last year's Challenger series and the twenty twenty Cronulla Shark, who is also playing professionally in Australia this past winter, spilling into the spring. 
He is Kyle's first strikeout victim of the night. And we've seen a couple of strikeouts from Josh Lavender in this one and a third games that we've played so far. And really for Labby, what I've noticed, just getting behind on a couple fastballs, he hasn't been able to bring the bat around. Talked about it with him last night when I ran into him out on the town of Savannah. Said just trying to play himself into game shape, which is tough to do. He hasn't been playing professionally since March. And of course, after Monday night, when the Drop Bears play the party animals, this team will ship back over to the land down under. 2-1 count on Blake Cavill, the second baseman. One for four with a ribeye. A run scored and a couple strikeouts a night ago. That one fouled towards the fans. It's going to stay in play. And with a 2-2 count, Cowboy Kyle gets the full capacity Grayson Stadium clapping. And he gets the strikeout. One, two, three, frame. Great start for Mr. Lewigs. No kidding. Kyle's last two first inning marks now both under three minutes. How about two minutes and ten seconds to start the first inning for Kyle? And perfect location on the 89 mile an hour heater. Down and in. Tough pitch to hit for Cavill. Manners will just need one run to win the first inning. And let's take a look at who they're going to try and do that against. Heath Gray out of Greenville, South Carolina, although has spent nearly a decade in Australia. Erskine College, he was a four-year starter there, anchor of the Flying Fleet's rotation. And he has played all over the place. United States, Canada, Australia, Germany, Austria, and Hungary, just to name a few. And you can prove he has become a true Aussie. He has stepped in kangaroo dung when doing PFP. And he's also developed an Australian accent over the years. And you talk about where this guy has played. I mean, tons of different countries. He's been playing at the top level in every single one. Still playing baseball over there in Australia these days as you get a look at where he's played in Aussie, the Balkham Hills. And got to compete for the Hungarian National Championship. Actually ended up with the key to Budapest because of how great he performed. Not many people can say that. Take a look at DR Meadows, Eric Jones Jr. and Michael Deeb due to swing it here in the first. Dan Oberst cleaning it up. Dakota McFadden, the big bopper in the five hole. Jackson Olsen, Ryan Cox, Vinny DeRubius, Noah Bridges, and Danny Hosley will round out the Bananas lineup tonight. And it's a fun order for the Bananas, especially at the bottom. Vinny batting eighth, Noah in the nine hole, and it's Danny Hosley for the first time this season occupying the 10th spot. The doctor has been the leadoff hitter for the Nanners ever since Dan Oberst yanked his hamstring back in early May in Kansas City. And boy, has he thrived there. He was heating up before getting the promotion a few spots up in the lineup, but he has embraced being at the top of the Bananas order, hitting 347, tied for the team high with a 438 on base percentage. That is with Mr. Oberst and a 904 OPS to go with it. Center fielder has been superb. And if you look at the numbers, just since he's moved into that leadoff spot, a 448 batting average for him, seven sprints on the tour, and two steals a first. Brennan behind the back. Max Brennan with the first trick play for the Aussie Drop Bears in this series. That was a beauty. I mean, we're seeing Max Brennan conquer banana ball in all facets, whether it's with the bat or the glove now. He's getting in on the trickery. Max Brennan. That's a fun play if I've ever seen one. You know, I don't know how many times I've seen someone on a ground ball go behind the back like that. That was actually a pretty new trick play for us in Banana Land. And what's more impressive is the fact that he's doing against one of the speediest runners on the Bananas Ball Club in DR Meadows. DR is no joke. 17 steals, third most on the team. And we've talked about it time and time again this past summer for the Collegiate Bananas team. He stole 26 bags in as many tries in just 20 games. 
2-2 count now on Eric Jones, the home run king on the tour. Nine long balls this far. Hitting 349, a 433 on base percentage. And almost half of those home runs for EJ have come solely against challenger opponents on the season. Once an 0-2 count, now full at three balls and two strikes. And the drop bears start shifting their outfield in, a dangerous thing to do against Eric Jones Jr. And EJ and the guys are starting to recognize that they want to swing in these counts, especially with that outfield shifted in. Backhanded by Brennan. Beautiful play once again by the Drop Bears shortstop. He's putting on a show early on. That's worthy of a star in your scorebook at home. Not a trick play, but boy, does he make it look so easy. I mean, it's almost comparable to that of Ryan Cox in a sense, Max Brennan. He's really a showman for these guys. Looking like a trick stop as well. 1-1 one, one count on Michael Deeb, the extra hitter in his third world tour. Now ahead, two balls and a strike. Deeb's been great as well, hitting 320, a 390 on base percentage. Couple homers, couple triples, eight doubles. OPS at 854. Heath, by the way, has quite an extensive arsenal as that fastball just barely clips the outside corner, according to Vincent Chapman, the home plate umpire. Chris Walker out doing the bases tonight. Heath Gray throws four seam, two seam, and cut fastballs. Slider, a changeup, a curveball, a splitter, and he might just break out the largest EFIS in the history of banana ball. And when you're as well traveled as Heath Gray, you're going to pick up all of these different types of pitches from the various locations you'll pitch in. It's a fact. By my math, he's pitched in about a third of the countries in the world. Don't check me on that. Another payoff pitch coming to Vitamin Deeb. And that's going to be a sprint. And this is an error on the sprint defense from the Drop Bears. Haven't seen a lot of that. It's still only touched two of their fielders. Deeb is going to slam the brakes at second. Not going to fool around trying to get three bases, but the inning winning run is in scoring position. Fantastic at bat there from Michael Deeb. Took Heath Gray eight pitches during that plate appearance, and the Bananas going to quickly insert Malachi Mitchell into this game to see if he can score the inning winning run. Flash the kid. Couple steals last night to make him 39 for 41. Pacing the world tour. And a 1-0 count on quite possibly the most dangerous hitter this side of the Mississippi, Dan Oberst. Leading the Nanners with that 381 batting average as this one, a pickoff attempt from Gray bounces off the base. It'll be an E1 and Malachi now 90 feet away from scoring. And that's the havoc you see Malachi Mitchell wreck on the base pass for the Bananas. Again, I touched on this last night. He has four walk-offs this season. They're all against challengers, and they've all come from him solely running the bases for the Bananas. He's cutting a foul tip on a sharp slider. 1-1 one, one count on the Nanners' first baseman. 438 on base percentage, 1066 OPS, both team highs. And there's the cutter at 75 miles an hour. And Gray ahead one and two. And Malachi's in a tricky spot here. He's able to skip her back to the base safely. Thirty nine steals in 41 attempts. As I mentioned, his 46 runs scored tied with Reese Hampton for the tour high. Son of Dennis Mitchell, United States Olympian sprinter, gold medalist at that. This one hit a mile high into shallow center. And it will be snagged for out number three. What a odd shift by the drop bears. Good work there by Heath Gray to survive the two-out two out sprint hold serve. 
And we're still scoreless after an inning. Let's find out why Eric Jones Jr. was our showman of the night last night. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's Eric Jones coming away with the showman award. Boy, was he phenomenal for the bananas. We pick it up here in the bottom of the first inning. And EJ coming up, he's going to take advantage of an Aussie drop bear shift and poke a double down the left field line. It was a critical hit in the inning as the bananas would tie the inning and no points would be scored. Here in the third, it's EJ with an RBI sprint for the bananas and he and the boys, they're going to get in on a little high five action. Another walk up for EJ on the tour. Now, he gives Donnie a massage, and how about this? He's gonna barehand a little feed from Jared Donaldson. And then, later in the sixth inning, Dakota stilts all Britain inserted into the game. And how about a little double trick play from Eric Jones as he flips to Matt Wolf, who goes and covers the bag. Now, EJ in the sixth against Tyrell Harris. He's gonna take another sprint for the Bananas, this one of two bases. And with Zach Phillips in for his first appearance on the tour, EJ goes behind the back for the first time this season and records his fifth trick play on the tour for the Bananas. But that wasn't it. It's EJ up again, third time's the charm, another sprint for EJ and his third RBI for the Bananas. It was a phenomenal showing for the Bananas first baseman who's now behind the plate tonight. And it's good to know Judy Pounders mentioned it in the K-Club chat, but Bill LaRoy is at a wedding tonight. That's why Eric Jones Jr. gets a rare start behind the dish with Cowboy Kyle on the mound. Eric is a superb catcher, and Kyle, after pitching to Bill LaRoy for seven straight years here between the University of North Georgia, six now in a row with the Bananas, obviously pretty much has telepa telepathic capabilities with the king of Dublin, Georgia. As Paul Winland Jr. bounces that to second, easy, breezy, beautiful. Danny Hosley makes his 13th trick play of the tour look like it's nothing. And it feels like that little behind the back pop to himself, becoming the signature trick play for Hosley over there at second base. That one doesn't get old. Finish up on Bill Leroy. He had caught 13 straight games behind the dish. A lot of that because of, once again, Dan Oberst injuring the hamstring and EJ becoming the predominant first baseman. A one count on Riley Light, the left fielder, who's gonna keep the didgeridoo after Kyle steals a strike and he misses the inside corner. Could have grabbed another one. That one actually did catch the inside corner according to Trackman, 87 miles an hour, but wasn't received incredibly by EJ. He's kind of dragged his glove out of the zone. So understandable why Vincent Chapman didn't call it a strike. 1-2 now on Riley Light, who went 0 for 4 with the ribeye last night. Chops that one over the leap of Kyle. Attacking it, Danny Hosley, and there's two down. That's a phenomenal charge by Danny Hosley. A slow roller there off the bat of Riley Light. But Hosley doesn't rush it, makes a solid throw to first there. And Kyle retiring the first five batters of this ball game. Now Cooper Morgan out of Canberra, Australia. See if he can break the chain. 0 for 3 last night. Was hit by a pitch. All three of his outs were trick plays. I don't know if we've seen that on the tour thus far. One called a ball. Trackman once again said it got the top of the zone. But Vincent Chapman, pretty consistent. He likes them down more than he does up. And how about Cooper Morgan? He does break the streak for Cowboy Kyle. He's aboard with two down. I'll tell you what, Biko. Kyle's going to look at me tonight. He's going to watch back this broadcast, and he's going to be mighty upset. I think I just gave him the broadcaster's jinx. Well, if you gave him the jinx, I doubled down on it. And equipped Cooper with just what he needed to get the first hit of the night for the Drop Bears. Now Jaden Cavill, the catcher, with a cricket bat and a bounce pitch from Kyle. He comes up empty on it. Looks like Vincent Chapman did not call Jaden for stepping out of the box, and I agree with that. <laughs> now it's a 1-1 count. And this time he does get him. Now it's a 1-2 count. 
I liked him not calling it the first time because it was kind of a stumble out of the box, but that was a pretty clear just stepping out. There's a bounce, a pop-up in foul territory. Dan Oberst will make the snag. And the first ever cricket at bat in Banana Bowl ends in a foul pop. One man stranded for the Drop Bears. And look at the big old beautiful fish that Oberst, Olsen, Cox, and Hosley picked up over there. Anders will just need one run to win the second inning. Josh, I believe you have yet another PowerPoint for us about the great country and continent of Australia. That's exactly right. I touched on Nashville during our last venture. And now, as we're back in Grayson Stadium, I figured I'd touch on Australia, even though I have never visited the land down under. So here we go. Australia by Josh Tulevsky. No professor in front of this one, okay? <laughs> as we get into this, the pros of Australia. Well, let me tell you. The Sydney Opera House? Of course. I think that's a pro. Gotta be. The 2000 Summer Olympic Games were played in Sydney, and I think that's a pro as well. We uh, love worldwide sport. Agree. Now, didgeridoos. I mean, you're seeing it in the pregame. The guy who comes out and plays that didgeridoo, that's pretty exciting. Major pro. Now, a ute. Do you know what a ute is? Is it another kind of instrument? It's a utility vehicle. I I'll have a picture way of it. Off. But those look pretty cool. It's thinking like ute, flute, you know? Now, here's where I get into some musical ventures. Uh, ACDC rules. Our next, uh, our next category, or next band, how about the Men at Work? I'm a big fan of Colin Hay and his band. I think they rule. Both great bands there. They talk about Vegemite sandwiches. It's a fact. Now, how about the Wiggles? <laughs> I like them. I love the Wiggles. Are you kidding me? And how about the Hardware Store Food and the Waltzing Matilda? Now, you're getting to see some pictures. There's the utility ve vehicle. That's Hardware Store Food, man. You can get this sausage. When you go to the hardware store, they're selling food to you. It's kind of like Costco in America. That's how I like to look at it. And uh, by the way, the Waltzing Matilda, it's their unofficial national anthem, and it's rather catchy, by the way. Okay, got to give that a listen. I also, next time I'm up in Saugerties, New York, have to tell my good friends at Smith Hardware, where I worked for a couple summers during the college days and a couple winter breaks at that, that some dogs, maybe some brats, would really spice up the atmosphere. I mean... They've made it six generations of being a small town hardware store already, but you gotta innovate to survive, you know? I think we could bring something over from Australia that could really change the hardware store game in upstate New York. I think you could as well, man. They call those things sausage sizzles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll get part two of Josh's Australia PowerPoint later tonight, Dakota McFadden gets a hanging bender at 68 miles an hour, hits it 82 off the bat and has the first hit tonight for the Bananas. DMAC in his third tour. It's been a very effective base runner, actually. Tied for the tour lead and steals a first with three. In total, he's six for six in his stolen base attempts. He's a very intelligent base runner. He finds the right times to steal first base for the Bananas. And again, when he sees an open base, especially with a man on third, when he's on first, he's going to try and take that base and get into scoring position. Now Jackson Olsen, the greatest showman in our TikTok superstar. He's not just here for social media, hitting 327, a 361 on base percentage. Smacked an inning walk-off double off the top of the right center field wall a night ago. But that's not it, Biko, because we saw a rarity last night from Jackson Olsen. He came up in the first inning and flew out to left field, and that ended the inning. But wouldn't you know it, but he was the last of the Bananas regular starters this season to notch an at-bat in the first inning. What about them apples? This ball lifted out to left center. Riley Light on his horse. Is it going to get there? DMAC, the inning-winning run. Chugging around third base. There's going to be no play at the plate. Jackson Olsen with a second inning winning triple. And the Nanners lead one point to zilch. What an unbelievable knock from Jackson Olsen taking it to that left center gap. And you talk about a guy who's batting over 500 in the second inning. He's also now got nine walk-offs against challengers, five more than second place for the Bananas. That was his 11th walk-off on the tour. He continues to be an absolute force to be reckoned with. Sitting there in the six hole. You think you get through the first five big boppers, you can take a break. 
with our social media king. Now that guy is just about as deadly as they come. And what a read by DMAC. Never a chance for the Drop Bears to nab him at home plate. We'll take a break as we head to the third inning. Maceo and the boys. Bananas and Drop Bears teaming up. Just an absolute delight. Thank you so much to the Drop Bears guys for getting in on the fun. Always a delight to see the Noggin Boss hats employed again. Maceo rocking the larger than life cap out there. Leading his eight compadres in the boogie. To the top of the third we go. Kyle Lewis has been cruising. He's faced seven Drop Bears, giving up one hit. Cooper Morgan, the only man who has reached. And Luix has picked up a couple strikeouts along the way. It is going to be 8-9-1 for the Aussies. Count one and two on Luke Livian. Went 0 for 2 last night. Did get a key ball four sprint and stole the base. That actually kick-started the five-run rally when the drop bears batted around in the eighth inning and secured their lone point of the night. Heater at 87 misses down, count even at two and two. And a cut and a miss. EJ scampering after the ball, didn't know where it was. It's Kyle's third strike out of the night, but Livian will reach on the wild pitch. An unfortunate situation there for Kyle. It's difficult for EJ, especially because he hasn't started a game behind the plate since, since May the 4th for the Bananas. So, Bill, we saw 13 straight games where he was catching for the Bananas. Now EJ having to settle back in a little bit. This is a very fun at bat here. Not just because we had a didgeridoo walk up to home plate because Rich Thompson got to pitch in Major League Baseball for six years. The majority of them with the Los Angeles Angels finished up with the Athletics in 2012. And now gets to swing the lumber. He was always an American League pitcher, so not a lot of MLB at bats as Kyle will bring Hosley, Cox, and Meadows in for a little synchronized dance. Fancy footworks. A slapping and jiving here. And the pitch. Chopped, back to Kyle, barehanded, throws to first in time. Living up to second and one out. And a big hug from Jackson Olsen on what I'm sure will be a multi-million view 3-2-2. That's a really great play from Kyle Lewis there. Getting off the mound that quickly after doing a 3-2-2 is not easy. And you saw just a second of hesitation from Kyle, who I know wanted to try for his seventh trick play attempt. His six already lead all pitchers. That was a good pickoff attempt with Hosley like a cat jumping to the bag. And that's what Kyle does so well. After a pickoff, he turns around and fires a pitch in there. To the top of the order we go. Max Brennan has been the best hitter for the Drop Bears so far in this series. 
Rounded out to third his first time. Guy with six years of experience at the top level in the land down under. Playing all six of them with the Sydney Blue Sox. Guy who spent five years of college ball in the U.S., starting at Western Nebraska Community College, which was a culture shock compared to growing up in Sydney, Australia, right next to the beach, being in the middle of nowhere. This one batted in the air. Noah Bridges will snag it. A tandem trick play between DR and Noah. And that was a beauty. And we saw the Duck and Noah try this play earlier in the season here in Grayson Stadium. And unfortunately, Noah not able to come up with the catch. But here, they're going to pull it off. That's an excellent and very creative trick play, especially considering it's out there in the outfield. Cut and a miss from Josh Lavender on the 89 mile an hour heater. He struck out swinging his first time. Kyle got the fastball past him. Nobody holding on Luke Livian, who's dancing off second base. That one sprayed down the left field line, and it's foul just by a foot. That would have been big time trouble. It would have been an unearned run on Kyle, as Livian's only on second base because he struck out. Nevertheless, an 0-2 count on Lavi. And if you're Kyle, you like the position you're in here. Already ahead, 0-2, with a guy up in Lavender, who again, hasn't been able to necessarily catch up to the fastball. He's able to foul that one straight back. Kyle elevated it, pretty much the same pitch he got. The two-time party animal swinging on the first time around. Kyle's asking for Velo, and I just, <laughs> I don't know if he understood, but I, I put two, uh, Two circles up for 88, as that is a slider looped into shallow right. It's going to dink in for a single. Lavender slams the brakes at first as Olivian jumps on home plate, and the drop bears with their first run of the night. And that's a tough run to give up if you're Kyle Lewis. So you know you should have had a strike out there to start the inning, but then Lavender able to get the base hit and drive in the run with a with a ball that's off the bat at just 76 miles, or 64 miles per hour. Yeah, the slider came in at 76. It left the bat at 64 as DR Meadows back flipping to retire Blake Cavill. His second trick play of the inning, his 22nd of the tour to lead all outfielders. And it does not get old. Another look at the DR backflip to end the frame, but the drop bears push a run across, so the Nanners will need, oh, hey, ho, oh, look out, we're in the booth. Nanners will need one run to win the inning, two runs, no, 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 I'm just all frazzled now. One run to tie the inning, two runs to win it. This is the Wheel of Unfortunate. Chad Reese, our coordinating producer, is holding it. I am spinning it. Oi, mate, crikey, I've got to speak like an Aussie. You ready to see me spin the wheel, Aussie Biko? Oi, send it, Joshua. <laughs> hey, Funky oh, Phil. Funky Phil's in the booth. What's going on, mate? Good day. Funky Phil, let's get you. My Aussie accent usually ends up a little British, as I've already spilled into it right here. Okay, I'm trying to talk out my nose. Funky Phil, let's spin the wheel of unfortunate, get you on camera. Here we are. Josh and I have both spun speak like an Aussie. What are the chances? It's crazy, mate. <laughs> Crazier chance than jumping into the water, finding a shrimp on the barbie, and wrestling a gator. She'll be all right. A Chug a cream of soda. Chug a cream soda. soda. We got a cream it's, soda. It's in the fridgey. Okay, it's terrific. In the Chad will venture in the over and grab a cream soda from the ice box. Ooh. Funky Phil, chug as much as you would like. And, you know, do oh, what, do do what you must. By half. Okay, Phil is chugging away, and we are underway. Our Australian accents will last for a batter. And that means Ryan Cox has the honor. That ball barreled out to right center field. Ryan Cox has extra bases. He's chugging around second. Oh, come on. He's oh, thinking about three. And it's his tour leading fourth triple on this young season. 
Yet another triple for Ryan Cox. I mean, swinging the bat very well. By the way, that's his first extra base hit versus a challenger. Ryan Cox would have had an extra base hit against the challenger on Thursday night if the game had not been rained out. He had picked up a double, but that got washed away with the precipitation. And that went out to Triple's Alley, right to the fan wall. He was smelling three bags out the box. The Drop Bears bringing the infield in, and they're going to employ that radical shift that brings all outfielders into the infield. It worked last night. 0-2 count on the Italian Stallion, Vincent Rubius. Inning tying run, 90 feet away. And that one misses outside. That looked like an Ephus. I think I still have a hint of Australian on my tongue here. I can't wash it out. And a cut and a miss. Pitch. That's a huge strikeout from Heath Gray out for his third inning of work. And there's a Very radical. Clutch. Very clutch. There was a radical speed difference there. A 60 mile per hour Ephus pitch from Heath Gray. And then he goes to 74. 14 mile per hour difference there. That's not easy as a batter. And still with great break on it. Now the Aussies back into a traditional infield in, but very shallow outfielders for Noah Bridges, who has real good pop. A couple homers and a couple triples on the tour thus far. Maceo Harrison doing his infamous wrecking ball dance in the first base coach's box as that one's fouled off. 1-1 one, one count on the Nanners left fielder. So Funky Phil, yes, you are as radical a man as I think was brought from the land down under, and we can't thank the whole crew enough that you were a part of this trip. I feel like you were born and bred for Banana Ball. How have you liked it, man? Uh, it is better than anything I've ever experienced in my life, apart from being a dad. <laughs> <laughs> Good correction there. Yeah. Got to add apart that from being in. a dad with my wife, yes, right. Of course. And you got to goof around at the Bananas Youth Camp, too. Yes, that was a lot of fun. You know, the, the kids, um, you know, you keep the kids happy. They'll, they'll keep bringing their parents back. And, and that's, that's very much a part of my life is the, the young, young kids. Yeah, it's great. Cox off third, 2-2 two -two to Noah Bridges. That one popped in foul territory. Someone coming for. And Jaden Cavill will make the catch. Nice job, Jay. That is a huge two outs for Heath Gray and the Aussies. A productive out can no longer tie this inning. And it's going to take a hit or something funky here from Danny Hosley in the 10 hole to tie this frame. Looks like the cutter up above the zone for ball one. Very, very crafty young Heath. Everyone's young in the team except for me. <laughs> <laughs> Throws just about every pitch under the sun. Yeah, the catcher doesn't have enough fingers. He has to use both hands to put all his fingers signs down. <laughs> yeah. Big 2-0 pitch to Haas. Great a miss. Good pitch, AT. Challenges him again with a cutter in the zone. Ooh, and this time. is where it gets dangerous in banana ball. One more ball will so, score Cox from third base. Yeah, 3 1, yeah. He'd be taken, I'm sure he'd be taken here. It's almost a free strike. And you're seeing the Aussies call in the outfield as they're starting to shade in here for a possible sprint defense. Danny Hosley not taking it all. Got a fastball right down Broadway. Fouls it straight back. Full count. Inning tying run at third. Inning winning run in the box. Danny's got the pop to end it himself. Two homers on the tour thus far. And the payoff pitch is lined deep to right center. And it's going to be over the head of Paul Winland Jr. The inning is tied. Hosley thought it was a walk-off. Now he's stuck oh, between first and second. He's going to get a double anyhow. <laughs> How about that? So the Bananas almost fumbled the bag. 
The Drop Bears were one out away from earning the first point for them tonight. And instead, Hosley with the RBI double. Now the Nanners lineup flips on its head. DR Meadows could end this inning either as a tie one to one or with another point for the Nanners. Hey, credit the Bananas dugout. They were yelling to Danny Hosley to keep running there as he was stopping between the first and second base back to try and celebrate with the team, only to see them keep pointing to the bag as he's going to take third base, and now he's just 90 feet away from scoring the inning-winning run. Danny's seventh steal and nine tries. 1-1 one, one count on DR, who grounded out to short his first time. And how about that one, Funky Phil, Max Brennan going behind the back for your first trick play here yeah, in Banana now, Land. It was a bit of a Maxi Brennan show that first innings for sure. Now, he, he came off very happy with himself, but um, it's not unusual, mate. He's a very, very good ball player, Maxi. Very good ball player. One, two to the doctor. That one looped got into there. left. Got a man there. Oh, oh, no! Oh, my gosh, Riley Light. He used one hand to try and snag it. It ricochets off his glove, and the Bananas have walked off their second straight inning, and now they are surrounding Blake Cavill here, or Jaden Cavill, rather, at the dish. Looks like he's in the middle of a rave here. They're undoing his gear, and they have stolen all of his belonging, belongings except for his glove. <laughs> it's been hoodwinked. How'd that happen? That was a fun one. That was pretty funny. So DR reaches on the oh, E7, man. will pick up his 12th oh, walk off of the tour. There you go. That might. And as we head to the fourth inning, it is Tim Tam's O'Clock. Thank you so much, Funky Phil. Fresh out of the fridge, cold Tim Tam's. Oh, look That's out. All right. Five second roll. Five second roll. Thank hot you. coffee. Yeah, nice. Hot water for Phil. And how do we do this thing, man? Okay, so what you want to do is you want to bite off both ends just a little bit. Right. You want to use it as a straw. Okay, so you put it in the water and you suck the drink through the straw. Mm-hmm. Now you like that? You like that? Mm. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. And then the best bit comes, you put the soft dip rest in your mouth. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, welcome. This welcome. is a delicacy. That's a delicacy, all right. That's why they sell them at the airport, you're walking out, and they're always empty. Mm. They're almost as hard to get as banana gear in Savannah. <laughs> wow. That was... Quite possibly one of the top 10 most delicious things I've eaten in my entire life. I feel like I've been changed in a sense. <laughs> this, is a, this is a life changing moment for Josh and I. You, you like that, huh? Yeah, yeah, they, I know. That's not a fake one like either. It's <laughs> world situation. Now it's very, very good. Yeah, there's life before and after Tim Tams. And boy, I don't, I don't want to go back to whatever I was doing before this. I loved the wheat bix. I really did. I'm a cereal guy, so yep. you know that's that's right up my alley. I enjoyed the Vegemite. Yeah. Even though I know many many folks don't. Well, you got to take it a little bit, you know, with a bit of cheese and also lettuce. Whoa. Yeah. Vegemite and cheese, Vegemite and lettuce. These that's are things. What want. These things I hadn't heard here. It's Vincent Chapman calls time, dusts off home plate, and now he is melodically just moving and grooving and. Will pick up a whole new pace to his dance here. Vincent. A little jackhammer of a human being. <laughs> Never seen anybody shake their tukis at such a pace. Not just the tukis, really. Every part of his body that could possibly shake. The guy's something else. I mean, he's he's leading the world tour in shakes per second. <laughs> You've been tracking that. <laughs> and there's nobody close in second place. Kyle Lewig's out for his fourth inning of work. And it is 4-5-6.
for the Australians. That one oh, is going to take a tough hop on two, Dan two, Oberst. And how about this? <laughs> Paul Whitland Jr. with the late slide. But into second base. Where are my boys? And an E3, Mr. Tulevsky. I believe so. Tough hop, but I agree. Yeah. Only the fourth error on the tour for Dan Hosley. Check that. Dan Oberst playing right next to Danny Hosley. Two Dans, one side of the infield. And now Riley Light will swing it. He grounded out to second his first time. Sliding stop by Jackson Olsen. That just deadens the ball and an infield single for the man draped in the Australian flag. And a good opportunity for your drop bears to strike here after losing two of the first three innings on the night. Runners on the corners, nobody gone. And it looks like a little backflip into the batter's box for Cooper Morgan, the DH, who's one for one on the night. And not only can he backflip in a batter's box, this is a guy who can backflip on a BMX bike. That's a fact. It was a tough decision to choose racing motorbikes or baseball, but he just got too good at baseball and started liking it too much to say no to it. 86 mile an hour tr uh, fastball. Trackman had it outside. Vincent Chapman gives Kyle the call. Good frame by Eric Jones. That the ball lined yes. up in the middle. Bats are coming alive for the Drop Bears. That one drives in a run. As Winland scores, and light up to second as Cooper Morgan, two for two on the night, as his first ribeye of the series. Yeah, and this is kind of a theme we're seeing in Kyle Lewick starts, especially against challengers. He's now given up seven runs against challengers, but only three of them have been earned. Trying to pick up his defense, Jaden Cavill. It was speedily undressed when the Nanners walked off the third inning. Actually worked out. She's in the correct gear now. Serves that out to right. Tracked down by Vinny Derubius, who sends it in. It will be cut off. And tagging to third base is Riley Light. First out of the inning. Runners on the corners. One run already home. Jaden now 0 for 2. And Luke Livian who reached on a strikeout that got away from Eric Jones Jr. And then came around to score. That was an inning ago. We'll try his luck against Cowboy Kyle. <laughs> now, Funky Phil, how does the atmosphere here in Grayson Stadium compare to what you've experienced playing ball over there in Australia? Mate, I can honestly say I haven't experienced this. I, I never played at the professional level. And we've got to run down here. And oh, 360, Ryan Cox to the dish. And running right into the <laughs> dugout is going to be Riley Light. As Cooper Morgan goes to second. That was an amazing play by Ryan Cox. That is a huge second out for the Nanners. I mean, again, you see the intelligence from Ryan Cox. And how about that? Riley Light not even willing to try and run into Eric Jones there. By the way, Vincent Chapman gave him a little bit of an L there when calling him out. <laughs> Never know what Vincent Ryan Cox with a beautiful trick play charging that one. That is his 70th of the tour in 74 tries. And one run for the Drop Bears, just like the one they scored an inning ago. It is unearned on Kyle Lewix. And the Nanners have the same situation here in the fourth as they did in the third. One run will tie it, two will win the inning. Now, I would love to let you get back with the people soon here, Funky Phil, but I have to take advantage of, of having you in the booth here for a second. Yes. Hey, baby o'clock here in Banana Land as we're in the middle of the fourth inning. Did you, uh, have you nailed the dance? Did you enjoy doing that down uh, there? Mate, I'm, I'm loving the entertainment and engagement. It's been great. I've actually noticed today 
people must have been watching the show and they've been calling out my name as I'm walking through the stands. <laughs> people have been coming up to me today instead of me trying to go up to them and trying to engage with them. So it's been excellent. But the Banana fans, um, Savannah in general, is it's the best city I've been in in, in, in the country, without a doubt. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's true. People, have, I haven't had a frown, uh, a glare, except for smiles. It's been exceptional. And everyone working here, it crept to Jesse, every person here that works here is must be handpicked because they've been phenomenal. Phenomenal. Everyone. So, I know I've really enjoyed everyone here. It's, um, it's a, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't describe it. Maxie Brennan is the same way. We just can't express how much we love this here. So no, we would love to be coming back and doing more of it because um, man, this is my element. I, I love this. I could do this every day of the week. I, I gladly trade up my landscaping business and come and do this. <laughs> Put me on the plane. I mean, fuck you, Phil. Let me, let me just say the feeling is very mutual. From seeing you do the ring dudes last night, do a little push-ups in front of people, to, to getting a steal of second base last night. Are these the thongs that you stole second the, the, base these, in? these were the thongs, yeah. I was going to put the thongs on and I was super, I was going to get a first time. I was using them as hand sliders. So, yeah, no, <laughs> these are the famous thongs. Maybe I can put them up on eBay. <laughs> Give them to some kid tonight. Was, I'll tell you a funny story, though. I know you guys call thongs something different here. Flip-flops. Yeah, I know flip-flops. And I knew that, but at the time I forgot because I was talking to the kids. I said, now, who wants a prize? I've got a smelly thong here. <laughs> and all the parents have looked at me <laughs> and I've got it's a song like on my foot thong sorry guys <laughs> uh, that's just yeah. some good that's some good international mischief right yeah. there, I'll tell you it what. wasn't on purpose but it was quite funny <laughs> <laughs> Heath Gray is going to be out for his fourth inning of work he's got the meaty part of the order two three and four to deal with Jones Deeb and Oberst EJ grounded out his first time how about Tanner Thomas <laughs> the party animal donning a drop bear polo here and ripping a little guitar down there with his head coach Mike Vivasis. Doing his best uh, counting crows impression, I guess. Mr. Jones is at the dish, so it all makes sense. EJ had a hot shot to Max Brennan at shortstop. It was a beautiful backhanded sliding stop and retired over at first. That one lifted into center. And it will be snagged there. Oh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> a lot of force between that chest bump between Luke Livian and Paul Winland. <laughs> Looks like Paul has moved back to center field. Luke started out there. It was no joke. Now Michael Deeb. Oh. And misses low and out. Deep reached on a two-base sprint. And ended up being stranded at third base. Well, it was Malachi Mitchell, rather, who had pinch run for him and was stranded at third back in the first inning. So, Funky Phil, we have told your story, but we cannot do it as, as well as you can. Can you bless our audience with the understanding? Whoa! How about that for an EFIS? All the way back to the backstop. Deeb's not even thinking about stealing first. He wants the AB. Bringing back his, his uh, Bill Lee impersonation there. <laughs> right. But I would say so. I think that was higher than Bill's ever done. Is looks like Split is having some trouble out behind. I saw his feet up there for a second. Deeb sends this thing. Bajillion feet up in the infield, and there is Max Brennan for out number two. How did Funky Phil become Funky Phil? How did Funky Phil become Funky Phil? Yes. New ownership took over in uh, Blue Sox, and it was Matt Cavill, and he brought me in. He wanted me to come and be the entertainment. I've never done entertainment before. It was about three or four years ago. And he asked me to come in and have some crazy name, and, and I wanted to engage with the kids, so it became Funky Phil. And, and that day, I created a Facebook page, and I just started liking everyone, and, and that's how it started. And yeah, I've just grown with it and gone with it. And it's funny, no one in Australia dislikes Funky Phil, or they might dislike my alter ego, right. <laughs> married. but Funky Field, we, I tend to get on with all those enemies I had when you play against people. You know, you know all those enemies you had when kids growing up, you play against their opposition, they always seem to like me now. That's, that's great fun. That's it's cool to fun. hear. Jeremy Atkinson will relieve Heath Gray here. Jeremy out of Brisbane, Australia. And comes out there on fastball, curveball, cutter, splitter. Splitter is his best pitch. And he went to Salt Lake Community College for a couple years, playing ball. 
and then went back to the land down under for a mission trip. Ended up becoming a chiropractor. But he is pitched for the Sydney Blue Sox and a couple seasons with the Brisbane Bandits as he gets Dan Oberst. Nice play over there at first base by Rich Thompson to get the scoop. And the Aussie Drop Bears have won their first inning of the night. Cut yes. the Nader's lead in half in one fell swoop. It is two to one. That's good, man. Here comes Jesse Cole for a brand new promotion. It's the Senior Olympics after that. We'll be back in the booth with Funky Phil. Ever grandma relay race. Now these grandmas are all from 69 years old to 82 years old. And we got the first team here, the hipsters versus the senior discounts. And we're gonna race all the way to the end. Fans, let's give them some encouragement. Seniors, on your mark, get set, go. Here they go. And it looks like the hipsters are off to a lead. They gotta pass the banana baton. And here they go, oh, great strides. It's now a power walking competition. Here they go. And they gotta get to the end. Oh, she's already celebrating, but here she comes. Oh, the pass. And it's now to Georgina, 80 years old, and Linda, 72. What's gonna happen here? Oh wait, there it's down to the wire. And the win. Let's see if they're gonna celebrate a little bit. Oh, a little, I like this, ladies. All right, let's hear it for our winners, the senior discount. That's enough, Vincent, and our first ever senior Olympics. Well, that was very fun, neck and neck, and a little showboating at the end. So nice, you get to see it twice. I really were. Uh... Unbelievable, okay. <laughs> we're... Back to the action, Biko Scala with Josh Tulevsky and the legend himself, Funky Phil in the booth. And Funky, how do the people know who you are out there in Sydney? Well, look, it's uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, spread of the words. I ran a big showcase for all our Aussie ball players um, a little while ago and I had uh, a big crowd out to that. Um, but just, you know, the baseball community gets behind other baseball communities. That's how it works. Let's see what Kyle Lewis is saying to the people here. Loudest cheer is what I'm going to throw. You guys ready? Let me hear it for fastball. Slider. Curveball. Curveball it is. So Cowboy Kyle mic'd up, <laughs> throws Rich Thompson a curve, and we'll get a foul ball out of it. It is 9-1-2 right, here. You guys are one for one. Let's do it again. Fastball. Slider. Curveball. Slider. Yeah, I agree, Kyle. Awesome. Thank you. 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. You guys want to go fastball here? You guys are really good pitching coaches. So Rich Thompson obviously knows what's coming here every pitch, and he pops this one up. Jackson Olsen pursuing, and he'll ascertain it. I probably could have caught that. <laughs> you could have, Kyle, but the greatest showman will take care of it for you. <laughs> Jackson just rolls the ball. Number 11, Max Brennan. Right to Mr. Lewigs there. It's good stuff. Well, listen. Mr. Funky Phil, you are an absolute legend of the game, my dear friend. Uh, I can't thank you enough for coming up into the booth, teaching us how to eat Tim Tams and, and goofing around with us. And I'm fired up to make sure we have a camera at you on all times down there and see what antics you're up to on the rest of the night. Well, hopefully I can get a stolen base for you. That's a fact. <laughs> We'd love to Funky, see thanks for coming up. You thanks, changed Josh. my life. So have Tim Tams. <laughs> there goes Funky Phil. You will see him all over the broadcast throughout the rest of the evening. And this one chopped to Jackson, barehanded across the diamond, just in time to get Max Brennan. 
We'll see if the drop bears or the fans will challenge the play. Looks like they're going to let that one slide, and I think that's the correct call. Chris Walker, who is on it. I mean, that was a phenomenal play by Jackson Olsen right there. You're going to get a look at it here on the replay. And Olsen waiting for that ball to chop before barehanding it and making a strong strike to first, barely beating Max Brennan there. With two down, it'll be Josh Lavender in the two hole, one for two. RBI single his last time, struck out his first trip to the dish. As we lose Funky Phil, we gain Michael Vitamin D. How you living, Big Tiger? Biko, how we doing, brother? Always good to see you. Great. I'm just going to prop that puppy right adjustment. into the mouth. adjustment. Adapt and adjust. That's a fact. Don't want to get sawed off up here. No, can't get jammed. Deep two-base sprint on the night. That was a pretty, speaking of Funky Phil, pretty... Funky starter, Heath Gray, had a lot of fun stuff. Whoa, nice. speaking of fun stuff. Wow. DR Meadows with a little bit of a cartwheel midair snag. You love to see it. The guy is electric, everything he does. He's always putting on a show with the way he plays the game. Has an absolute cannon of the arm, as you saw last night, to end the game. And then coming back, getting tricky to the end the ending. And uh, looks like the boys are going to nap it out here, going into the bottom of the fifth. Getting intimate with Noah Bridges. You get to see this one again. Wow, he landed that puppy. And what's worth acknowledging here, guys, is we're halfway through this ball game. DR Meadows already has three trick plays in this ball game, the most we've ever seen by an outfielder in a single game to this point. We'll see how many more he can get the rest of the way. We'll be back with Deeb in a second. Let's get a sneak peek at the ripe rundown, recapping all of the month of May, coming out tomorrow on the Bananas YouTube. All that and more right, right now, now on the Rife Rundown! That ball is annihilated on the money in time! And the ball's on fire! Wow! These guys are out of their minds! Back flipping makes the catch! Oh, what a catch! Oh, a new trick added to the arsenal! A colossal flash! Are you kidding me? Welcome in to episode three of the Ripe Rundown. We are breaking down a magical month of May in Banana Land. Biko Scala, a headsetless Bananas broadcast entertainer. That puppy is somewhere off in the land of good and plenty. Cowboy Kyle Luigs, the ace of your squad. It was a great month for you, man. It was. A lot of traveling, a whole lot of new places that I had never been. And um, that, that is first all to you're going to you know, get to see. Leave. The rest will come out tomorrow on the Nanners YouTube page. Biko Scala and Josh Tulevsky. Joined by Michael Vitamin Deeb in his third straight world tour. He has been just about as good as they come. Hitting 320, 390 OBP, couple dongs, couple triples, eight doubles. We're playing great this year, man. Oh, thank you, Biko. It's a lot of fun. Anytime you come out to Banana Land, there's so much energy here. Uh, I was telling one of the fans in VIB today that I, I wish uh, when I was with the White Sox that we had this type of engagement. I probably wouldn't have put so much pressure on myself. Probably would have played a lot better because uh, I'll tell you what, the way people get into the game here, it's special. Jeremy De Atkinson back out on the bump. Full count quickly here on Dakota McFadden, who singled in the second and scored the inning-winning run. A walking barrel, we like to call him De Barrel McBackspin. <laughs> I like that. That one flied to right, and it will be snagged. I thought that Paul Winland might have been winding up there for a little something funky. Mm -hmm. He will catch it nonetheless, though. Deep, did you come up with that nickname? I did. You know, we, we were in the chop shop getting after it swinging, and, uh, you know, we, we love to barrel the baseball here in Banana Land. So, uh, you know, you got the greatest barrel man at the plate right here. It's, it's just all around uh, a team full of barrels and guys hunting backspin to try to drive in <laughs> runs and score points for the boys. To barrel McBackspin. <laughs> you can't, can't make that stuff up. It's a one-two count on Jackson Olsen, who had the walk-off triple that Drove into barrel mix backspin back in the second inning. How about Jackson? Absolutely lighting it up lately. I mean, he's been so fun in the field. That Girls ball. just wanted to short. Yeah, that was scorched. A little nice pickup over there, getting back to the bag for the out. Rich Thompson's playing a good first base tonight. He is. You know, these guys have come in with so much excitement, 
bringing all the enthusiasm. They're totally bought into this game. And, uh, you know, out of a challenger, that's something you really love to see when they're excited as we are. And uh, it has been an absolute blast to share the diamond with the Aussies. A heck of a play by Max Brennan at short as well. And he has been an absolute delight to watch over these two plus games played. Oh, yeah. Three for five last night, a homer away from the cycle is Ryan Cox. Make him two for two on the night, a triple, a single, and a run scored. A and man, you, go ahead there. You guys won't believe this, but Ryan Cox now already five hits in the month of June. He had four all of May. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We're all about plussing it. We're all about getting better here. And boy, is he plussing it in the month of June. Malachi Mitchell will pinch run for him. Second pinch run opportunity of the night. First time he stepped in for you, and he's almost picked off there. Jeremy Atkinson nearly nabbed him. Nice little pickoff move there. Buying in to the banana ball style right there. We need Rubius at the dish. There goes Malachi. Throw from Jaden Cavill. Not in time and not caught either. As <laughs> Flash the kid pats that thing away from Jaden's brother, Blake. And I'll tell you what, our man Vinny right here is, is due. The Italian Stallion, he's been working his butt off, gets an opportunity here and would love to see him driving a run and walk it off for the boys here with two outs. Got a great base runner out there to bring in. Vinny came into the night hitting right at 200, although hitting 235 in games he starts. It's really hard doing what he's been doing on the tour, playing sparingly and getting a lot of pinch hit opportunities. It's just tough to get in a full swing of things. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, baseball is a game of adjustments, and day-to-day, uh, -day it's, it's not like football or some of these other games that you could spend an offseason in the weight room. If you're not in the box and seeing that live pitching, it can become tough. But I'll tell you what, there's somebody that prepares. I mean, like Vinny, it, it, he's an absolute professional in everything he does and the way he carries himself on a daily basis. A phenomenal teammate, and we're grateful to have him as it's flicked out here to right if it gets down that's going to be a walk off come on tell me tell me tell me yes there it is there it is i'll tell you what the fastest man in baseball really holding out there for us <laughs> making it interesting and now we got looks like some ping pong going on with this okay a little ping pong back and forth between dalton malden and malachi mitchell wow how about the jump slam there from Flash the Kid to win this imaginary point of ping pong? Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, I love my some ping pong myself and uh, really good celebration for the boys bringing out a little difference there. They were practicing flicking those cups in rehearsals <laughs> earlier and uh, always having fun with it, plus in everything we do out here in Banana Land. Vinny has had a whole lot of barrels straight to people. He deserved that pop for a walk off. His first walk off of the tour at that. and. Deeb, we learned a little bit about Australia earlier tonight. Josh, we're going to continue learning about the country and the continent. That's right. Uh, we're getting back into this PowerPoint. I did the pros. Now I'm going over the cons of Australia. So how about snakes? Uh, some of the most venomous snakes in the world. The top 10 actually all in Australia. Wow. Uh, barefoot folk. I don't <laughs> really. They walk around barefoot all the time. I'm not big on that. And shoeies. Chugging the beer out of the shoe. I'm, I'm not about that either. I think the last two are both pros for Beacon. Uh, Crocodile <laughs> Dundee 2. Uh, number one was good. Number two, not a sequel nobody asked for. And how about this? Magpies. They'll swarm you in Australia. It's quite dangerous. I think that's a con. Yeah, I agree. Wow. Now, top five Australians. I've got Russell Crowe, Greg Norman, Hugh Jackman, Steve Irwin, and the Tasmanian Devil. And here you, I've got this picture of, of Russell Crowe, <laughs> Greg Norman, Hugh Jackman. There's all Steve Irwin and, of course, the Tasmanian Devil. And now we will get into Josh's score. Guys, I'll hold for your drum roll. <laughs> Australia gets... 9.5 out of 10 cricket balls for me. I have never been to Australia, but let me tell you, I'm quite impressed. And if it wasn't for the swarms of magpies, <laughs> I think you'd get a perfect 10. You're war more worried about the magpies than the top 10 poisonous snakes in the world. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> Just sounds like seagulls. We've got yeah. seagulls here. I'll tell you what, I'll take a, a peck in the head rather <laughs> than a snake bit uh, foot any day of the week. That's Dude. for sure. Uh, 
You I'm see, a big man, but I'm scared of snakes. <laughs> these magpies, they're coming after folks just trying to ride a bicycle down there. Wow. I actually have seen videos of that. <laughs> I have seen that. It's a, little, it's a little spookier even than it sounds. Here's Blake Cavill. It's 3-4-5 for the Aussies here in the top of the sixth inning, and he's flying it to DR Meadows for out number one. Blake 0 for 3 on the evening, second time that he has popped it to the doctor. And now it'll be Paul Winwin Jr. 0 for 2. Ground out, reached on an error, and has come around to score a run. Michael Deeb, you were the showman of the night on Saturday night in Nashville. How, how good does that feel, man? Man, it, it's always a blast anytime you get an award or an opportunity to uh, put on a show for the fans and it gets recognized. Uh, I'm grateful for that. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's really cool in, in a game of uh, failure at times that banana ball and baseball can be that when you find some success and you have some success, you want us to celebrate it. And we get to celebrate it every night with a sold out crowd. So that's a great feeling, man. And uh, grateful to God for that one. That's cool. Now. I'm not fishing for a compliment here or anything. I'm, I'm really not, but I'll just, I'll have you know, Deeb, that uh, I was actually the man who nominated you for that Showman Award. Well, Josh, I'll tell you what, I'm hooked, and uh, <laughs> guess what? You're going to get it. I appreciate that big time, brother. All praise and high regards to our boy Josh. <laughs> well, that's what you get. You get a couple big old barrels, double and a triple, and cherry on top, beautiful trick play out and left. It's a heck of a... Night of Oof. Banana Ball as Paul Winland sends that thing a mile far and foul. That was a homer if it was hit in the right direction. I'll and tell you what. 101 off the bat there from Paul Winland. I mean, that ball was barreled. That was indeed a barrel, <laughs> and I hope that my car is parked in foul territory enough to evade that one. Otherwise, that's definitely a windshield breaker right there. Kyle gets 88 mile an hour fastball by him. Picks up his third strikeout of the night, his first since the first inning. Actually, check that. You forget the strikeout that was a wild pitch and got a man aboard in the third. So it's his fourth K overall, and now he's out at second base, ready for about a 118-foot pitch, and the slider is outside. <laughs> is he going to top it off with a little? Ooh. No jump throw here. Comes set and pitch number two of the at-bat. Riley Light, one for two. Has a 2-0 count on him. Singled his last trip to the dish. He's got to at least provide a little added difficulty to be playing with the Australian flag draped across, draped across your back. Yeah, speaking of buy-in, I mean, like I said, these guys are bought into banana ball. They're bought into plussing what they do. And uh, really, with their props and what they've brought to the game, it's added a whole lot of fun and a lot of things we've never seen before here in Banana Land. The heater misses just a pinch low. It's going to be a four-pitch sprint. And your boys, excellent on the defense. How about the Aussie Drop Bears sprint defense? That's been insane. Phenomenal. And, you know, they showed up the other day in our first practice and we're cleaning up the field we leave it out for them in BP and these guys have a meeting at the mound and when their coach broke it, broke it down they immediately sprinted out to their positions and went right into ball four defense uh, you know speaking of challengers when they buy into that and really play our game the way we play it it, it it just is so much fun. And I'll tell you what, uh, I was lucky for that little bobble on their ball four defense on my sprint. Otherwise, I might have only been parked with a single. So thankful for a drop there. They've executed the ball four defense well and really bought into the way we play banana ball here. Yeah, and I mean, I think we're even seeing just the intelligence from them. They're starting to get a read on you guys as players. We're seeing them shift, some of you guys. I mean, Jackson Olsen in his last at bat smoked it right at Max Brennan, who was just to the left there of the second base bag. Right. You know, Reggie Horton, our phenomenal coach that always gets us useful, tells us we got to communicate in the infield, the outfield and the dugout. And those are three things that these boys do here. These Aussies, I tell you what, they're communicating out there and they're on one one synced up motion out there on defense. It was a beautiful outside heater. And when I say outside, I mean outside. It was an inch or two out there, but a great frame by Eric Jones. And Kyle will have his fifth K of the night. He's through six innings, two unearned runs given up. He's been excellent. And Kyle, the benefactor there of the 10th missed call from Vincent Chapman tonight, believe it or not. 
I'll tell you what, you, you love when there's some good glove love behind the dish and really presenting pitches well. Makes it tough for anybody calling pitches back there, I'll tell you what. We've got a lot of love for Vincent, and uh, I wouldn't want his job because, boy, would I mess it up you. royally. I couldn't agree more. Well, what a pleasure this is. Matt Cavill, the owner of the Aussie Drop Bears, the man who made this whole thing happen on a mic. How you living tonight, Matt? Well, I'm very well, Rockstars. How are you guys going? Oh, we're doing great. A lot of extracurriculars. I'll have a few pounds behind me here, guys. <laughs> Typical Australians. A little extracurriculars going on behind you, man. How, yep. how are you enjoying your trip here and, and your first journey in Banana Ball? <laughs> no, no, mate, we're loving it here, mate. The, uh, we're guests in your house and... We're having, we're having a ball. Uh, that, that's cool to hear. Now, how, how did you make this thing happen? I mean, how did you get this entire team from the land down under a 28-hour journey over here to play these four games? Mate, it all started with a phone call back in, uh, I think it was late September, to Jesse. And uh, I remember telling Kevin, my business partner, that um, he wants to speak to us next Saturday. So all week we uh, sat there thinking of ways to maybe uh, spruce up what we could do and things like that. And we called him the next Saturday and he'd already had a date time and where we're going to be and we're ready to rock and roll. So the next day we put out a post of <laughs> players that uh, wanted to come and here we are. Look at these muffins. I can see it in the, in the, the fly, in the uh, vision. <laughs> Jeremy Atkinson back out on the bump. He's thrown an inning and a third now of relief. And yeah, Jeremy's from um, from Queensland, mate. One of the Pine Hills players that we've picked up, and uh, he plays a bit ABL. Also, a lot of these guys playing the ABL in, in college here in Australia. I'm dead set copping it here, fair dinkum. But um, like, like I said, we're guests at your house, and it's uh, it's been fantastic. Yeah, we've got a. Uh, a lot of uh, young young drop bears coming through. We have a tournament in the Gold Coast in a couple of weeks that attracts 40 odd teams, and uh, yeah, we take nine of those for baseball back to the US here in a few months, and a couple for softball as well. And uh, you know, they're the future of this game here, and we we hope to continue this for a few years. And who knows, have you guys in Australia? That'd be exciting. Yeah, I got chills when you just said that. We got a one-two count on Noah Bridges here. It is 9-10-1 for the Nanners in the bottom of the six. The Bananas lead three points to one, which was the final score last night. But it was a thrilling end as Bridges bounces out to Rich Thompson over at first base. He's now 0 for 2 on the night. It's not much more you can ask for having the tying run in scoring position, winning run at the dish at the end. And before I ask you this question, here's Jesse Cole. man you think you might be able to find somebody in australia who could swing the bat pitch it and field on five foot stilts mate we've got performers in australia so i'm sure we could find a couple we've got plenty of clowns don't worry about that <laughs> the, uh, the, the buzz here is electric first pitch lobbed in all the way to the backstop dakota's not going to try and steal first base i think that would yeah we could be here for a while if you want to steal second at least that's a fact but um mate it's just absolutely electric here i've never seen anything like it it just doesn't stop for three four hours it's crazy inside the stadium outside the stadium when it finishes it's just absolutely amazing you guys have got a fantastic product and i can see why there's a waiting list of tickets of hundreds of thousands so congratulations to you guys it's absolutely it's exhilarating well we really appreciate it Kevin. I mean, you have just added to the mayhem here. It's it's pretty special that you guys created the first ever international games of banana ball as Stilts <laughs> cues that one to second. And now your son, Blake, is racing him to the back. He's going to have to flip it there just in time. <laughs> Great showmanship from well, Little Cav over there. Mate, we're happy to be the first. It's a, quite a privilege, to be honest. Uh, we're just a couple, few blokes that we just put together and... Uh, <laughs> So we come to the biggest stage. It's the greatest show in sport. There's no, there is no doubt about that. Yeah, you know, a lot of purists that we have in, in Australia would probably not like this type. But uh, once you come here, 100% it changes your attitude towards the game. There's people smiling, left, right, to centre. There's kids it's just a buzz. I've just never seen. I'm going to be honest. I've never seen this many people. It's insane.
all through the town. Savannah's beautiful. All through the town, yeah, you're getting the high fives in the streets. We're getting free drinks at the club. The boys aren't worried. <laughs> the boys are uh, liking that part. But um, here goes Maxi. Oh, between the legs. There you go. Got him again, that a boy. That's his second trick play uh, of the night. But uh, no, the boys are, you know, for, for, for 17 blokes that probably didn't know each other before <laughs> three days ago, uh, they've, they've really adapted to the... Uh, to the concept here and um, I couldn't be prouder, couldn't be prouder, especially with Ox, Ox and Tomo running the show, couldn't be prouder, it's fantastic. Well, Matt, once again, we cannot thank you enough for making this whole thing happen as we get another look at the trick play from your shortstop, Maxi Brennan yep. over there. He has now doubled the amount of trick plays challenger players have had on the tour and this is the 10th challenger game overall, so really impressive stuff there and uh, real quick before we say goodbye to you as Matt Wolf backflips onto the mound. Our trick pitching extraordinaire will start warming up. How can the people learn more about the drop bears and Osball and, and everything that you guys are doing over there in Australia? Hey, they can uh, jump on the social media pages. We're at uh, Aussie Drop Bears for Facebook and Osball Tournaments for Facebook as well. We're also on Instagram and uh, TikTok under the same names. But one of the things I want to thank the fans here. They've, they've purchased merchandise. They've supported us. Uh, we're looking forward to the uh, party animals on Monday night where we might get a bit more love, maybe 50-50% because uh, they love you guys here. But yeah, you can jump on our socials and on our Facebook pages, etc., and purchase merchandise, support the Drop Bears. So we can do this for years to years. Yeah, we don't do it, don't do it for the money. We do it for the love of the game and giving kids, and especially the older kids now, opportunities. And uh, mate, it's just. It's the greatest show on, on, on earth, as it, as it says before every game. Kev, I can't stop smiling. I can't. You're, you're a legend of the game. You're I a can die a happy man, mate. I can die now, and I am a happy man. <laughs> Thank Dead you set. so much. Thank you so much for doing all this and popping on the mic. We'll see you after the game, Big Tiger. Thanks, boys. Take it easy. We'll have a few cold ones. That's a fact. There goes, there goes Matt Cavill. The man who made this whole thing happen. And as we enter the seventh inning with Matt Wolf on the mound, Dakota Stilts all Britain over at first. And Matt's son, Jaden Cavill, leading off the inning. It is our Hoka giveaway inning. Jaden pops that one to Jackson Olsen across the diamond and still is able to make the snag. Perfectly placed seed from third to first from Jackson Olsen. And let me tell you, when you've got a glove that big, if you're Dakota Stilts on Britain, you're going to catch the banana ball in that thing. Great play. Well, not every time as Jaden goes over three. In fact, a TikTok that last I saw it had about two and a half million views on the Bananas TikTok was of Eric Jones Jr. flipping a ball for about 15 feet to Dakota. It clanged off the glove and then obviously he can't reach down to get it. He's 10 feet nine inches up in the air so he had to kick the ball over to EJ. It doesn't always work out. So it's just that much more miraculous that that one happened. And remember, Hoka giveaway time as I have been trying to say the giveaway tonight is oi, 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 and that is going to be O-Y space, O-Y space, O-Y. Oi, oi, oi. So you have to click the link in the description of the video. Oh my gosh, the link in the description in the comment section is that is an excellent running snag by DR Meadows in, no, he doesn't get there. Oh my gosh, how about a club from Luke Livian? And he's going to end up with a triple. That thing was smashed, and he had to use a tomahawk to get to it. Yeah, we're seeing the Bananas play around with their defensive alignment here in this inning. It's Noah Bridges out there in center. DR Meadows at second base for the Bananas. And how about Danny Barrels? Dan Oberst moves from first base to left field for this inning. Rich Thompson keeps his left foot in the box, so he's okay. That was not a full attempt at stealing first base. As, now wait a minute here. To quote John Sterling, where did I go wrong? As Rich Thompson is plunked, looks like Noah Bridges did in fact catch that ball in center. Yes, that's correct. Okay, I thought he did, but then all of a sudden, I had people shaking heads in the booth. Livian was running over to third. My first thought was correct. That's, that's what they call Australian hustle. Yeah. Just running out the play, man. Rich Thompson is plunked. And now Funky Phil from the broadcast booth to the base pads. He is the pinch runner. 
Trying to get a peek at Matt Wolf through the five foot stilts of Dakota Albritton. The pride of Ellaville, Alab uh, check that, Georgia. I always want to declare him an Alabama resident. Just feels like one of those guys. This one's going to be dropped on purpose by DR. And he will take Funky Phil off the bags. And either way, <laughs> it's going to end the frame. So <laughs> absolute pandemonium there in the top of the seventh. Matt Wolf does his job. Puts one man on with the hit batter. But Strands funky over at first and in the middle of the seventh it is time for the soccer mom race remember the buzzword is oi 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 space oi space oi space you still have another half inning to enter for your chance at a free pair of hokas here is the soccer mom race with jesse cole are you ready heather are you ready all right let's give them some encouragement here we go on your mark get set go Blistering start. And they got the first, kids. Here we go. Nicole's in the lead. Heather's two steps behind. But here's the challenge, kid number two. Good jump. Look at Nicole's pace. But here comes Heather. <laughs> this is the biggest challenge of them all. Oh. <laughs> Wait, they're taking a break. But here comes Heather with the comeback. She's hanging on, one kid down, and they're going back. All right, here we go. And it looks like Nicole's got him on, and look at Heather. Okay, we're back to the oh. third kid. Oh. What a, oh, the front hug, I've never seen this move. One. place with a great battle Heather and her three kids wow what a race what a race indeed that was a soccer mom race for the ages right there Cooper Morgan is the third man to throw it for the Aussie drop bears he takes over for the bottom of the seventh has to keep the bananas off the board to avoid dropping their fourth point of the night take a look at what he's done as far as collegiately, a couple years at Walters State where he was a pitcher only, and that makes it that much more impressive that he's two for three on the night with a couple singles and an RBI. And it's going to be interesting to see how the Bananas bat here against Cooper Morgan. They don't see a lot of lefties. They see them mostly in these challenger games, and so far the number's not terrific for them, but the heart of the order for the Bananas, we'll see what EJ, Deeb, and Oberst can do. Brandon Sherman. The only lefty on the party animals. And Morgan comes in for two, three, and four. Eric Jones Jr. puts his tuckus behind that one. That is all the way to the warning track. Triples alley, and EJ's going to dig for it. He's got himself three bags with a head first slide. And the inning winning run just 90 feet away. That one 97 miles per hour off the bat. And EJ, he has been the best bananas batter, especially in challenger games. Batting close to 400 against challenger opponents with four home runs, and that triple's going to extend his eight game hitting streak. He's got four multi-hit games in that span, by the way. Uh, it's so fun to watch the man born in Jacksonville, grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina, absolutely chugging it. Of those last 90 feet there, the drop bears are going to bring five men into the infield. Now make it six and seven for Michael D. Nice front door bender for Cooper Morgan. Count 0-2 on and, the Nanners extra hitter. And EJ said that he was very excited to bat here in this second game, especially after seeing the drop bears shade that outfield in so much. He had a feeling he could poke one over their heads and get a nice extra base hit. Deeb 0 for 1, a pop out and a two base sprint tonight. EJ now 1 for 3. And that is going to end the inning. Would have done so either way. It looked like it was deep enough to be a sack fly. Instead, it'll be an RBI single. And the Nanners up four points to one. That is the end of the Hoka's giveaway. I hope you got 
your forms in there and put oi 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 in spelled correctly Melisent Bean Supreme the queen of the K Club and Hoka give her away extraordinaire will not be giving away any Hokas to people who do not follow our stringent rules here maximum effort is rewarded in Banana Land Vico, I believe we've got some friends of the broadcast, some old friends of ours who might have entered in the Hoka giveaway tonight. I'm hoping to maybe hear Maverick Cole come away with the pair. Well, Maverick, Orketa, and Emily, of course, owner of this here ball club, alongside her husband, Jesse Cole, the man in the yellow tux, who you have seen and heard a handful of times already tonight as the splits perform and send us to the eighth inning. Mav and Kenna, we wish you the best of luck in your pursuit of Hoka's. I believe they come in such small sizes. Deep gets his 12th walk off of the tour. DJ scores his 18th run. And we have two innings to go here. As the splits do exactly that. With their patented big finish after flipping and flying all over the place. And here is Connor Higgins. You see what he's done across seven and a third innings of work, just a second below six minutes per frame toss. And it has been the control that's been his bugaboo, which is the same thing that the Los Angeles Angels said was his problem, even though he was excellent in his final spring training there. But I'll tell you what, the talent and the power is there. He's 94 to 97 on the fastball. And really with Connor, he's kind of dealing with the same thing that Matt Malatesta and Jared Donaldson struggled with early on in the tour. Connor, of course, still new to banana ball. He's trying to get a feel for the baseball that we use. The seems a little different. He's just trying to find his control. You got to feel pretty soon he's going to figure out his pitches and be able to dial it in and throw more consistent strikes. I would not doubt it. He's coming off of Five years with the Los Angeles Angels. So they drafted him in the 30th round in the 2018 draft out of Arizona State after three years in Tempe. The Rangers had nabbed him in the 35th round the previous year, but he decided he would like to spend one more year as a Sun Devil. And I don't blame him. I have heard it's a fun place to be. And I could speak from experience that Phoenix is magical. Count full at three and two on Josh Lavender. One for three on the night, an RBI single, a strikeout and a fly out to center. And he will work the sprint. And he's gonna hang tight with one bag. Still, still out there playing first base. This is the first time we've ever seen him get multiple innings in the field. Well, he must have, he must have really convinced Tyler Gillum and Adam Byron tonight or impressed with that showing at first base in the last inning. It makes, it makes sense defensively. Danny Hosley warming up in the pen, and that is who Dakota Pinch hit for in the sixth inning. So you don't have to do anything crazy with your defensive substitutions here to just send him back out there. He was one for one on plays in the field, getting the throw from Jackson Olsen from the other side of the diamond. That is a swinging bunt, and yeah, there's no chance there. Good hustle from Blake Cavill. Now one for four on the night. And the Drop Bears have something cooking here in the eighth. Two on and nobody gone. That's a really tough hit to give up for Connor Higgins. It's one of those balls that kind of ends up in no man's land there in that infield grass. And Blake Cavill able to reach. Little Bermuda Triangle action. As a heater at 90 miles an hour catches the zone, Connor takes a little bit off of it to find a strike. Once upon a time, it was known as the Ty Jackson Triangle here in Grayson Stadium. Uh, those push bunts. I still have beautiful dreams about them when I close my eyes at night. He's playing with the Lexington County Blowfish this summer. With another banana, Landry Mead in tow. Good to see them 
Sticking around in the CPL is the wild pitch from Higgins. Sends Lavender to third and Cavill up to second. Ty just came off an incredible season at Florida A&M. His first year there after a couple campaigns at East Georgia State where he was putting up video game numbers. And boy, what an amazing couple summers he had. Back-to-back -back Coastal Plain League championships with Bryson Bloomer of the Party Animals. Paul Winland Jr. strikes out swinging. Victim of the 92 mile an hour heater and now Riley Light ahead of ball and no strikes. That was a stellar pitch from Connor Higgins to get that strikeout. It's always those high and tight fastballs that you're able to get batters to chase on. Winland just couldn't resist there. This one chopped to Jackson Olsen. He's going to go home with it. And in plenty of time, Lavi dead meat at the dish. And now first and second with two down. Great play by Jackson Olsen. He's been terrific in the field. Here's Jesse Cole. All-star, former World Series pitcher, and Red Sox Hall of Famer. Fans, let's hear it for 76 years young, Bill the Spaceman Lee. Well, Bill the Spaceman Lee will come in for the man who actually this past winter was pitching in Australia, throwing for the Perth Heat in the Australian Baseball League. Higgins was their closer and touched 99 miles per hour with a heater during his time in the lucky country. And he's giving way to a very effective relief pitcher here for the Bananas. Bill Lee, he's becoming that ace in the hole in this Bananas bullpen. You look at the numbers, nine and a third innings pitched, still without a ball four sprint ever given up in his career. And we continue to see the earn run average drop this season. He's only a couple percentage points below league average when you talk about ERA plus for Bill Lee. And he came into the game last night in a big situation in relief of DJ the Invader who got roughed up. And what did he do? Well, he got three three straight batters to retire there. He has gone six straight appearances without allowing a run. Now it totals to two and a third innings because quite often he comes in to just get one out. But he snagged two last night and even had a trick play miss behind him. So really he recorded three. Earlier today, Josh and I ran into Bill, his wife, and their pup, and he has been sanding away at a piece of wood that he brought down from Vermont in the woods off his farmhouse as he sends that one in. A wobbly, as they call it, in cricket, and wow! A leaping 360 behind the back snag by Vinny DeRubius. I don't believe what my eyes just saw. Have yourself a night, Vincent DeRubius. He earns his first career walk up and his first career trick play. And he had told me a couple days ago that he had been practicing something tremendous out there in right field. And you just saw it. The 360 spin gets Billy out of the eight. The folks in Trumbull, Connecticut must have just jumped through the ceiling. This was masterful. So nice, you see it twice. Vinny! Guy's out of his mind. Are you kidding me? And a kiss to the crowd from the Italian stallion. He gives him the Italian gesture there, buddy. Hey, how about a little gabagool for the people? Hey, I know uh, some balls up in here with the 360 trick, please. All right, Paisan. <laughs> <laughs> Carl DeMasi will really like that little bit. <laughs> What a snag. I mean, I'm just, I'm living on cloud nine up here after what I saw. That was mind boggling. I feel like I've been banana ball baptized. <laughs> Jeez. What a perfect way for the one-eyed wonder to send us into yellow here in the middle of the eighth with the Nanners up four points to one. And our video legend, a fellow Italian stallion and man out of Connecticut, just like Vinny DeRubius, Chris Sachi, what 
did you just see, man? I mean, what an honor. What a, a milestone moment for the Paisans <laughs> out here. And he's from Connecticut, just like myself. Oh. And how about it? I'll have to say it's because we had the Italian spread last night at dinner. That's the only way that this could happen. That was some good Alfredo last night. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. goodness. Oh, it was good Alfredo. Josh, I was talking to you. I was like, wow, this is good. Tastes like home, baby. Tastes like trouble, Connecticut. There we go, Vinny. Let it fuel you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it was the pasta with the meat sauce with the gravy. Chris Sachi, thank you so much. Not the last time that... He's popping on the broadcast. I think any time that Vinny Drubius does anything amazing, Sachi, if he's within a country mile of us, has to come on the mic. I mean, this is this is a tradition that was born tonight. He is our, our resident Italian expert. Yeah. You just need him to break down these situations. I mean, I am Italian, but I'm not Chris Sachi or Vinny Drubius Italian. You know, I just... I can't understand it like the guys who grew up having Sunday dinner with every relative they've ever met each day grow or each week growing up, you know? It's a different breed of Italian. Wow. What a journey tonight's battle has been as Harrison Babbitt takes over. Man out of the university of Central Missouri, as you see right there. And he will have four, five, six. Oberst, McFadden, and Jackson Olsen here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And what a mighty cut there from Dan Oberst, too. You know, I'm no statistical expert. Well, actually, I am a statistical expert. Yeah, that's actually what you're hired to do. But I'm, I'm fairly confident this is Dan Oberst's second career uh, high Sox game on the 2023 tour, and I'm loving it. It's good to see those thunderous thighs really get all the attention they deserve as the count now three and one. And the man who started at first base has been holding down left field for the last two innings. He's played a handful of right field across his five-year bananas career, and that is a beautiful swinging bunt. Couldn't have rolled it down the third baseline any better. Danny, one for three on the night. Inning winning run aboard. And Dan had a six game hit streak on the line late in this game. He's gonna take the extension any way he can get it. It's now up to seven games. Now Dakota McFadden, or as Michael Vitamin Deeb says, DeBarrel McPaxpin. Beautiful work. <laughs> it's just, it rolls off the tongue. One for two on the night. Singled back into second, scored the inning winning run. I've got a hunch we could see that on a lower third pretty soon. <laughs> to barrel McPaxpin. <laughs> Mr. Roberst will advance a bag on the wild pitch from Harrison Babbitt, who grew up in Austin, Texas, transferred over to Dallas for his high school days. It's four seam and two seam fastballs, cutter, 12 6 curve. And he makes his bacon on the splitter as DMAC fouls that one straight back. Harrison was on the high school bass fishing team. You don't see those in Saugerties, New York. That one just misses the zone, although Trackman disagrees with Vincent Chapman's call. You sure see those in Madison, Georgia, though. <laughs> you, do, you had one. Oh, yeah. I was not on it, though, I must say. Surprising. By the way, that was a nasty offering there from Babbitt. Big first out with the inning-winning run in scoring position. DMAC won for three, and now Jackson Olsen, the third baseman, had the walk-off triple in the second. Grounded out sharply to Max Brennan at short his last time. One called a ball. It was a strike once again, according to Trackman. Dan was running on the pitch, so he will collect his 22nd steal in 25 attempts. Only Malachi Mitchell has more, and he pinch runs two to four times every night. Dan will celebrate his back swiped with a little guitar playing as the Drop Bears bring the infield in. 2-0 pitch. Make it 3-0, and Harrison is going to throw it home. Not in time. Dan Ober steals home. He walks off the inning. 
It's his 11th walk-off on the tour and his second steal in as many pitches. The legend of Dan Oberst in Banana Land grows greater by the minute. You don't see a first baseman who can do that every, everywhere you go in the baseball world. No, you really don't. And Dan is such an intelligent base runner. He's a guy who's been playing with head coach Tyler Gillum for a very long time. He's really just become the guy who embodies that green light special base running system that Tyler Gillum has. And man, I just know that that's a play that fires up Tyler Gillum and Dan Oberst at the end of this night. That is a fact. Jesse Cole letting the people know that we are in our final inning. And I'm glad that I was able to get the ing there on his announcement. We're just too fired up about Mr. Dan Oberst and all he does when he's out there on the diamond. Mind-boggling stuff. He gives the Bananas their fifth point of the night. And as you look at the final inning rules right here, it always happens if the clock strikes two hours or if you get to the ninth. And tonight we had 20 minutes and change to go when we reached our final frame. Trot Bear's not out of this. We've seen a handful of four-run rallies in the ninth inning already on the tour. Although the odds are stacked against him because you look at the man, the myth, the legend, Danny Hosley, who started the night at second base and comes in with a Torlo 1.70 ERA in 37 innings pitch. The 52 strikeouts compared to 14 sprints and 24 hits. Looks like it has to be a graphics mistake but your eyes do not deceive you, and we did not mess it up. No, they do not. And that 1.70 ERA, it's equivalent to a 338 ERA plus for Danny Hosley. 100 is the tour average. That means Danny Hosley more than three times better than the average banana ball pitcher this season. And you talk about his statistics since May. How about a 1.38 earn run average with 15 strikeouts and six saves and six opportunities in that time? Like a fine wine, he just gets better with time. Bottom of the order for the Aussie drop pairs, 7-8-9. And a 1-1 count on Jaden Cavill as he takes the 90 mile an hour heater for a strike. And fouls off 92. Osley, a three pitch mix. Four seam fastball, Vulcan changeup, and a 12-6 curveball. He'll mix in a two seam every once in a while, but it's pretty much just throwing straight heaters as the 12-6 misses a pinch high. And each pitch just as equally effective for Danny Hosley. Really, he just does such a good job of blending pitches and speeds. Dan Obers diving catch to rob Jaden Cavill of a leadoff hit here in the ninth. I believe Noah Bridges is actually back here in left field. We've got defensive adjustments all over the place for the Bananas. It's the standard defense that we saw at the beginning of the game, but that was a stellar diving catch by Noah Bridges. You normally see this guy in right field, but again, he knows how to play a mean left for the Bananas. Noah goes from center back to left as the two innings with stilts on first ends with Dan back over at first base, as you mentioned, Josh. DR goes from second back out to center. And by the way, it wasn't bizarre that DR was in the infield. He played nothing but infield for the Bananas across his 20 games played in the Coastal Plain League this past summer as 89 catches the inside corner, according to Vincent Chapman, or tad in, according to Trackman. This one to Dan Oberst. And this time, it actually is him who makes the snag. Drop Bears down to their final out as Luke Livian pops out. And it's going to be up to Rich Thompson here in the nine hole, 0 for 2, a ground out, pop out, and hit by a pitch to try and keep the Drop Bears' hopes alive. 
And Biko, what's worth noting here, as it does feel like we're reaching the end of this ball game, just under 15 minutes left on the clock tonight. We have seen a tremendously fast game. The Bananas with five walk-offs tonight. And we, when you talk about the minutes per inning marks, the highest one we've seen tonight, four minutes and 40 seconds from Kyle Lewigs in the third inning. This is the fastest average we've seen in a game this season. 12-6 curve. Nearly gets Thompson on the noggin. And he's able to foul off 91 right down the dong. Drop Bears down to their final strike. And it's the big bender in there at the top of the zone for strike three. The Bananas knock off the Drop Bears five points to one and win both games against their foes from the land down under. They took a one-point lead in the second inning. They had never looked back. And we'll throw it down to Christian Deerman, Mr. Electric, to shout out himself and his teammates as they come away with the four-point win. Oh, yes, we love you so much, Bananas Nation. My name is Shark. We appreciate you being here tonight. Right now, though, down to Mr. Electric. What an electric win tonight. Can I make some noise, Banana Nation? Now it's time to celebrate with all your favorite players and cast. The next time you hear me, Woo! The next time you hear me, Up first, our phenomenal coaches, Tyler Gillum and Adam Byron. Our cast of characters, Malachi, Flash the Kid Mitchell. Our trick pitcher, Matty Wolf. Our bat trickster, Alex Ziggy Ziegler. With a scoreless out tonight, the tallest guy ever, Dakota O'Brien. And our dancing first base coach, Mary Maceo Harrison. Super pitchers led by Kyle Louise, Jared Dawson, Matt Malatesta, DJ the Invader, and Connor Higgins. The man behind the dish, called Mr. Jones, the Eric Jones. Call him now, call him later, call him maybe. Give it up for Noah Bridges. Being escorted to the mound by Reginald Horton, Dan, the man, Oberst. With the save tonight, Danny, do it all, Hosley. Our trick stop with multiple trick plays. Give it up for number six, Ryan Cox. Our backflip and doctor at center field with an amazing catch, D.R. Meadows. Out with his new hit single, Miss You, Love You. Give it up for our second baseman, Don Malden. And with an amazing tornado catch in right field, give it up for the Italian Stallion, Vinny Derubius. Get that chest pump into the walk of Dakota McFadden. And up to the mound, the barrel fighter himself, Mr. Michael Deeb. And our greatest showman, number eight, Jackson Olson.
The Aussie Drop Bears have been amazing. The Bananas have had a great three-game series. They got one more game against the Party Animals, and the Party Animals take over on Monday. But we have one more surprise for you tonight. We thought we would light up the sky with some fireworks. What do you guys think? So if you guys can join in with a countdown, we're gonna light up this sky. Here we go. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Showtime. The banana is now 21, 20, and 2 on the tour. They have a record above 500 for the first time since March 11th as they take down the Drop Bears 5-1. to one. And what a beautiful start to this fireworks display. Orange, green, pink, white, blue, magenta, red, all going up in the sky, darting off in every which way with a big old jobber up top. That is about as large and in charge as you can see as we have our FPV drone. That is first person darting through the fireworks here and trying to remain in one piece by the end of the night. These things are heading in every which way. Kind of like if you're running away from the bad guys in Manhunt and all of a sudden they appear out of nowhere and you've just got to scatter. You got a little group of like four and all of a sudden you've just got to get anywhere. Wow, and that was just about 20 or 25 different explosions up in the sky. Like you just threw a big handful of pebbles out into a calm mountain pond and it's just ripples all over the place. Now down low, some gold, silver, and blue. What a beautiful sight. These things popping off and sparkling in every which way, like fireflies that have had far too much caffeine. Now one darting up in the sky and a beautiful heart. The red heart up in the sky, how Josh and I felt after we had Tim Tams for the first time tonight. Now this one jetting up at a miraculous speed. And it's going to explode into a classic palm tree effect and transforming into a bit of a weeping willow, drifting down. Looks like it's gonna touch the sky, or touch the ground, rather, and it will fade off just at the last second. Enormous pink, enormous orange, enormous green. Those things fading out and into existence. And there's another scatter of pebbles across a palm, a, a little mountain pond down low. It is bronze and silver breaking off at an incredible pace twinkling in the twilight here in Savannah. That kind of looks like when you feed someone from the United States some Vegemite and they spit it out all over the place. Not me, I loved that thing. Okay, up top, another gigantuan blast. Down low, we get a little pink and orange added to the scene here. Twin pops in the sky. And another dissolving jobber right up top. Looks like the sun, and then it fizzles out, which luckily shouldn't happen for another few billion years. Wow, that one. A variety of shooting stars. Looks like meteors coming through the sky, but you can really see the actual molten rock at the end of them. They've really got that strong spear point down low. It is constant red and gold up top, a big old yellow and pink to follow. Now another one sneaking, kind of like in Game of Thrones when someone says you've got about 200 feet to run and then I'm firing an arrow and you're just going in serpentine motion, hoping that that thing's not gonna find you on the way down. R.I.P. Rickon. At the bottom, it is blue and gold. Shades of UCLA, and that is as big a firework as I've seen in my life. Red envelops the entirety of the sky here in our city by the sea. It is a two-part show. Down below, the golden blue is accompanied by some green and white flashing in a strobe-like effect, just like the Aussie drop bears have been seeing the last two nights when they've been hitting up all the best clubs in Savannah. Big old pink up high, now turns into a bit of orange, arcing out of the sky like a flaming ball of a trebuchet. 
or a catapult attacking a medieval castle. Down below it's red, white, and blue. And of course, an amalgamations of nations across the last three nights in Banana Land. We love the green and yellow of Australia and the red, white, and blue of the United States of America. Talk about great alleys. Talk about great allies in the world and in the young sport of banana ball. Wow, now those things popping out and shooting into the world. With a bit of a crabgrass effect jutting out from the earth with those treacherous little spikes, which would be a problem for anybody running around barefooted, which is a con in Josh Talevsky's book, although that's pretty much how I grew up. You know, you run around enough with bare feet, kind of just turn into shoes of their own. Now it is pink and green and gold and red. Oh, the sky is filled with a massive barrage of colors of size and speed that I cannot possibly keep up with. They are all over every shape you could possibly imagine. Oh, Grayson Stadium Sky is enveloped with color and sound, and it is a stupendous sight to behold. Smiley faces, big old circles, blasts, booms, kablams, kaplooies, some pink, some blue, some pink, and our firework display has concluded. What a masterful display there. And a heck of a job by Nick Keldy, keeping our drone alive in the sky, flying right into the thick of the fray. Biko, coming at you with a little bit of our fireworks advanced stats, much like the last uh, show in Nashville. Once again, a story in four parts in terms of the pops per second. It started at eight pops per second, then doubled to 16 about two, four, about a half of the way through the show. You get to the three quarter mark, how about 27 pops per second? And 40 at the very end of this fireworks show. And now, how about 37 different color variations tonight? So we saw less than we had in Nashville. But here's the thing. Out of the colors, we saw nine different reds, eight different blues. So we had a lot of red and blue tonight. And then the sparkles per second, the highest sparkle per second rate I saw tonight, 53 sparkles in a second. It was quite impressive. And in terms of our color, shapes, and sizes, a new statistic I decided to track, 28 different shapes and sizes. That's all I've got for you on our fireworks stats. That is why you are the best in the business, Mr. Josh Tulevsky. That was a phenomenal fireworks show. Thank you to the great people who set it off above historic race at the stadium. That was a show unlike I think this ballpark has seen in the majority of firework shows across 97 years of its existence here in Daffin Park. Okay, Biko Scala, Josh Tulevsky, before we shut this thing down, we have to shout out our Hoka winner and remind you that Monday night when the Aussie Drop Bears play their final game in the, in the United States, it is against the Party Animals and it will be on the Party Animals YouTube. So if you come to the Savannah Bananas YouTube looking for a ball game, you're going to have radio silence. You need to be on on the Party Animals YouTube to watch Monday night's game. Of course, it will be free like all of our 42. Check that. Carry the one. 43 broadcasts now on the tour have been, and all you have to do is get to the Party Animals YouTube to check it out. So it's the only one of the 87 games where the bananas are not involved, and I can tell you, as obvious as it sounds, it is going to be an insanely unique show. You will not want to miss it. And of course, you don't want to miss these Aussie Drop Bears playing one more game. They have been superb. I mean, the vibe is going to be a little different from sure. We're going to see a very talented party animal squad go up against these guys. You're going to see a lot of fun from those guys. And of course, the drop bears, they're going to be just as invested as they were when they were playing the bananas. No doubt about that. Okay, you will get your Hoka winner tonight down at the plaza party. Josh and I have to keep on moving. Boy, is it a special winner as well. So you will find that out in just a minute. We're going to look for some drop bears and bananas down there. It won't be the longest post-game
game of all time. We're trying for a quick hitter, saying hi to some folks, getting some good stories, and then we will let you get back to your Saturday night or your Sunday morning if you are watching in Australia. And thank you so much to the great folks who have these three and, or check that, these two and a third games have been stupendous, and I can't wait to see what happens when the Nanners face off, or when the uh, Drop Bears, rather, face off against the Party Animals on Monday night, which will be 6.30 p.m. Eastern. It will be 8.30 a.m. Australia time for the pregame show. Okay, we dismantle our headsets, and we go to the stick mic. And now we are cooking with gas. Oh, we got it going. Jacob on the camera. This is a jack of all trades. Talk about a man who can do it all, a Swiss Army knife, not just of VTV, but of entertainment. You may recognize him, although you can't see him, as the man who introduced Jose Masvidal during the weigh-in when he was in Banana Land last summer. And of course, he stood in for the young professor tonight. Always an absolute blast to have him a part of the VTV crew and the show down on the field. And this is uh, as good a Roman cameraman as you can find in all the land, as well as PA announcer. Watch out for the ladders. Those things will come out of nowhere. A ladder uh, is a way that we will set up our first shot on the ripe rundown tomorrow. That is a shameless tease for our ripe rundown coming out on the Bananas YouTube page tomorrow, which will be Sunday. And oh, hey, oh, Clayton, thank you, buddy. In the United States, it will be Monday in Australia, and that will be wrapping up all the action in Banana Land throughout the entire month of May. It's about 25 minutes of action-packed fun you don't want to miss, and for the first time in three ripe rundowns, it features our darling Josh Talevsky. Yeah, and it was a blast to be a part of this ripe rundown. I'm not going to give my entire segment away, but I will say it's on brand. We're talking about a couple statistics here and there, and you might even see me strike an interesting pose as well. That is a fact. Uh, not might. You will see Josh strike an interesting pose, and one that you have seen him strike before if you have been an astute broadcast watcher. That is Jake. That's the guy who designs all of our specialty T-shirts. That dude is absolutely a maniac when it comes to graphic design. If you saw the T-shirt that came out in Las Vegas or in Nashville or these Australian games, uh, against the Bananas and now coming up against the Party Animals. That's the brains behind the operation and a former roommate of Josh Talevsky's on the tour. Yeah, and Jake's a pro, man. One of the kings of merch in my book. And man, I'll tell you, the Vegas shirt, the Nashville shirt, and even the Drop Bear shirt that he designed, they're all incredible. They really tell a story. And we've got our banana right here, our first man we're going to talk to in the party plaza tonight. It's the Italian stallion, Vinny Derubius. And Vinny, dude, a milestone night. You hadn't gotten a start since April 1st for the bananas. And now you come, you get your first walk off of your banana ball career, your first trick play as well. Walk me through the night for you, man. Well, I've been, I've been working really hard and, you know, trying to do everything I could to be a good teammate. And I finally got my opportunity. I was lucky enough to make the most of it. I got an opportunity to walk off an inning, and I got the opportunity to pull off my trick play, and I, I couldn't be happier. And the Nanners got a win, so couldn't be a better night. Vinny, what do you think you have done for Italians, not just in the United States and Australia, but the rest of the world with your stupendous and record-breaking performance tonight in Banana Land? I think uh, the Italians are on notice tonight. How we doing? <laughs> How we doing? And, and Vinny, I've just, I've got to ask, I mean, you come in, you play two and the third games against the Aussie Drop Bears. I mean, what have you learned from playing baseball against these guys? I mean, what are the takeaways from playing an international team in banana ball? Um, it was incredible, number one, to be a part of the first ever international banana ball game. But to see how guys from Australia and other parts of the world buy into the bananas culture, and they love it just as much as we do, and they were totally bought in. So it was it was honestly an eye-opening experience for all of us on the Bananas to see how welcoming they all were to our culture. And I think uh, hopefully they bring it back to Australia. Now, Vinny, the, the main reason why you hadn't gotten a start since April 1st is because you had dislocated your shoulder playing spike ball in Tampa. And listen, there's a lot of extracurriculars you were asked to do in Banana Land as far as entertainment. What is it like trying to rehab from that and still find your swing while not getting playing time, uh, you know, every day in and out? Like I said, it's just every day you show up to the ball field, and honestly, I'm just grateful to be out here every day to strap up the cleats, and I just go to work, take care of business, 
you know, continue to be the best teammate I can be. And I believe everything's going to work out the way it needs to. So I, I, I'm very grateful for tonight. All right, last thing, we've got to let you get to the fans and more importantly, let the fans get to you. Uh, just like Brandon Sherman, you are a family man and you had Sunday dinners with your family growing up. Uh, do you have anything you want to tell the people back home watching in Connecticut or wherever they may be for you? I, I know they're watching tonight. I love you guys and I miss you very much and I hope to see you guys soon. Vinny DeRubius, thank you so much, my dear friend. Thank you, guys. Great to see you, Vinny. Good to see you, guys. Honey, come on. I made the Italian stallion. What more can you ask for? What an incredible game. As we get with another banana here, it's Eric Jones Jr. getting himself a big knock, a showman from a night ago. And EJ, congratulations. You had your fourth showman award. Walk me through tonight, man. A pretty memorable game and a convincing win for you guys against the Drop Bears. Playing against the Drop Bears has just been so much fun. They've done an amazing job bringing the energy, bringing the entertainment, playing really good baseball. It's been a lot of fun for us. It's given us a lot of energy, and we just appreciate everything that they've done for the show, and we're excited to see them play the party animals on Monday. You're the tour leader in home runs. You've been a menace throughout the tour, but you have been especially deadly against the challengers. Is there anything that awakens inside you that makes you play so much better against these challengers? I try to bring it every night, for sure, but Definitely when we're going up uh, against a team where either we know we got really good players on the other team, the challenger games, we don't know what we're going to get. I definitely feel like it's an opportunity for me to set the tone, being at the top of the lineup, hit something hard, get the boys fired up, pass it on down the line. So I definitely take a lot of pride in that and just want to keep hitting the ball hard. We've got millions of questions we'd love to ask you, EJ, but you have thousands of fans who want to get autographs here from you. So we'd love to get let you get back to the action here. Appreciate you so much. Thanks, EJ. Yeah, thank you, guys. Eric Jones, Jr. I mean, that is as good as it comes as far as Banana Land. And we will, oh, yeah, look at this. And now we move over in the plaza. We've got Max Brennan joining us here on the broadcast. Max, unbelievable night for you. You're the first challenger player to ever record a multi-trick play game. Walk us through the night and the experience of playing here in the bana in Banana Land the past couple of nights. Uh, the past couple of nights uh, it has been unbelievable. It has been hands down the coolest baseball experience of my life. Uh, I played in the Pro League back home and college ball, but nothing compares to this. Uh, I was actually really nervous day one. I had no idea what to expect, and it wasn't so much the 4,000 people here, but really ner like nervous about what's going to happen. I hadn't watched too many banana games. It was mainly uh, seeing all the TikTok videos and whatnot, but once I saw the energy from the players and the fans and just everything, I, I felt like a 10-year-old again. I'm just having so much fun, and yeah, it's just been really enjoyable. You are an incredibly accomplished baseball player who has played all over the world in six seasons at the top level of Australia in the ABL. And now you have really left your mark on banana ball, not just the two trick plays tonight, which by the way, doubles the challenger trick play total of all time. And this is now 11 challenger games, ah, 12 challenger games that have ever been played dating back to last year. But you also uh, were a home run away from the cycle last night. Is there anything about playing in banana ball that has really led to so much success for you? I think the energy, again, as I said, I'm feeding off of the crowd and feeding off of the moment. You know, the last couple of years, I've always been a high energy player and I felt like I've lost it a little bit. But coming back here, as I said, just the vibe, everything, like knowing what to expect after the game out here and just, yeah, I'm just buzzing, man. It's, and this, this town is really cool. You guys have been so accommodating. The people are great. I'm just really high on life right now. I mean, upon your return to Australia, what do, you, what do you hope is the biggest thing that the Australian fans will take away from the sport of banana ball? We need a league in Australia. I'll tell you that right now. This is, this is so much fun. It's going to be really weird next week playing a real game of baseball again. I'm probably going to be bored. <laughs> Max, I cannot tell you how much we appreciate you giving some of your time, and, and not just that, making the 28-hour journey here to take part in, in uh, you know, our circus surrounding a banana ball game. You have been the exemplary banana ball player, man. It's been an honor to watch you play, and can't wait to see what you break out for us on Monday night. Yeah, look, maybe a few more trick plays, hopefully a hit. I didn't get one tonight, but okay, we're good. Real, real quick to touch on that, because as we said, you just set the trick play record in a single game for challengers. Are you practicing these things? Like, how does it come about? Honestly, you know, college ball or when I was a kid, we'd mess around when we're taking ground balls whenever the coach wasn't looking. Um, so I've had some practice with it, but it, yeah, it's something that I'll never do in a real game of baseball. But I thought if I get the opportunity 
definitely will. I wanted to win the first game. It just never... I didn't get the good bounce of the ball, but tonight I just thought, let's do it. Yeah. Excellent banana ball feel by you, man. It's been an honor to watch you play. Can't wait to see what happens in two nights. Thanks. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks, there goes Max Brennan, who is uh, an incredibly talented baseball player, banana ball player at that. And what a special treat. You don't see this guy on a mic too often after the ball game because he's so hard to get with the fans swarming him. But Vincent Chapman, excellent work by you today. The dancing, the calling of the game. What was the experience like for you, Big Tiger? It's amazing. These Aussies are amazing. I want to go to Australia like right now. I want to ride a kangaroo. That's how good I feel. I want to ride a kangaroo, let it punch me in the face, and I just want to eat a bunch of that stuff you ate last night, that Vegetella. Yeah, Vegemite. Vegemite. Yeah. I'll some of that. That yeah. Vegetella. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they make sure you know it's not Utella. You should use it sparingly. I was a big fan. Have you gotten into any of the Tim Tams, the Wheat Bix? Have you gotten any of the Australian delicacies? No, I'm diabetic. Well, that's okay. Listen, I'll tell you what. The Wheat Bix, I don't think that'll be okay on your diet. And uh, Tim Tams, maybe not. But the Vegemite, they say, is incredibly healthy. I heard. I heard it's a little salty, but I'm okay with salt. Cholesterol's not an issue, just my blood sugar. All right, well, we've got the Tim Tams. You may not go after that, but we have the Wheat Bix and the Vegemite up in the booth. We'll get it to you uh, in the near future, at least. I got one request. Can I sign your forehead? Oh, gosh. Is it a permanent mark? It is permanent. No, but I appreciate the, uh, the honor. Oh, Chad Reese. No, don't do it. Okay, we've got Vincent signing Chad Reese's forehead. Of course, Chad, our coordinating producer. And Vince, let me tell you, man, this is a good-looking signature you got there. How long have you been practicing this thing? For two years. Two years. And, wow, Vincent, I tell you what, a little kiss on the cheek there from Chad Reese. I mean, there's love all over the place here in Banana, Banana Land. Vico, I, I think as we're wrapping up this show, man, it's about time we announce who won some Hoka's. Oh, man, your, your broadcast field, Josh, is at an all-time level. The Hoka winner tonight, and boy, is this a special one. Come on, are you kidding me? It is Mr. Todd Patty! Congratulations, my dear friend. Enjoy your free pair of Hoka's. We appreciate you being such a good fan for so long, and luck is in your favor. That is now two, count them, two Bananas Insiders who have gotten Hoka's on the air. It is Todd and Judy Pounders, and uh, we appreciate you, man. Congratulations. Yeah, unbelievable. Todd, can't wait to see the pair of Hoka's you get, man. Congratulations to you once again. Okay, time to shout out our entire cast and crew and wrap this thing up lickety split. In the control room, Griffin Ellis, our technical director, pressing all the right buttons. Our director, Chris Haynes, calling all the right shots. On the audio, Katie Duke on the ones and the twos, the best in the biz. On the replay and on the first person drone flying in and out of blasts and booms and kablams in the sky, Nick Caldy, a.k.a. DJ Squints. On the graphics, Julia Massey. On the scorebug, Michael Basista. They don't miss an absolute beat. Here in the field on the cameras, it is Emerson Elmgren, the iron horse of BTV, the best in the biz over on the first base camera. Across the diamond, Dakota Burns said on the third base cam, as good as they come. On the high home, Mr. Clayton Franklin, he is a superstar. We're going to have a poll coming on a mustache battle, a little controversy, a little controversy, as Jimmy Fallon would say here in BTV. On the low home, Caleb Douch, you are a superstar. Out in center field last night on low home today, he is turning into a Swiss Army knife on the center field camera tonight Mr. Ben Barks that is what I'm talking about Ben that guy precedes me on BTV and on the wireless cam Jacob Noterman Jacob give yourself a good nod of yeah you rock a thumbs up that's actually perfect and you saw him doing a lot pregame on the entertainment side he is a superstar in many respects on the utility action tonight Henry Campbell getting people mic'd up bringing us up coffee and hot water to make sure that our Tim Tams experience is exquisite and keeping us up to date with all kinds of stuff. Henry, best locks in the world and just a superstar. Our moderators in the chat, Scott Thompson and Colbite underscore. There's an underscore at the end of Colbite. I want you all to know that we couldn't do this thing without you. You guys are the best in the biz. And our video legend, as well as hopping on the mic, Mr. Chris Sachi with the meatballs and the gabagool. He is as good as they come on the editing and in Italian heritage knowledge. Our YouTube king, Zach Bro, that is the guy with the plan. And our K-Club and Zappos queen, Melly B, Melicent Bean Supreme. 
She is the reason why you all get those beautiful hokas, so you should really love that gal. Josh Chalevsky, excellent work by you, my dear friend. Biko, I've got to say, broadcasting with you might be as good of a combination as Tim Tams and coffee. Wow, that is the best compliment I've ever gotten in my entire life. Thank you so much to Michael Deeb, to Funky Phil for joining us in the broadcast booth, and for Matt Cavill for getting a mic on him down on the field, for Chad Reese, the coordinating producer of Bananas TV, who now has a signature of Vincent Chapman on his forehead. That is just stuff you cannot make up. I am Biko Scala saying so long for now. Monday night, remember, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Australian time on the Party Animals YouTube. It is on the Party Animals YouTube. Party Animals versus the Aussie Drop Bears. It's going to be a blast. We'll see you then. And, of course, oh, watch the ripe rundown tomorrow. We'll see you later.